Hello and welcome back to Serie A Spotlight with your host Jake and Matt. You know what time it is! I can't tell you guys enough how much you've been my internal monologue when thinking about football <laughs> for the last year. Hey, amazing! We get to record while drinking some wine. Jake and I will have a very special soft spot for Salah. Yeah, we, we love him. We love him. Stop zooming in on Allegri's face, bro. You're gonna make how me are you break. exposing me? Because you're gonna make me break. <laughs> <laughs> Hello and welcome back to another episode of Say A Spotlight. This is episode 133 and we're your hosts Matt and Jake. And we've got a guest on today, guys. A special guest and I think it's about time we unveil him. <laughs> it's like he's a massive deal, this guy. That. <laughs> <laughs> yeah! <laughs> Fuck yes! It's patron Matteo Ebeye. Goes by Teo. Goes by Teo. Yeah. We've got the Teo kit. How are you today, Teo? Thank you so much for having me on. This is the best thing that's happened to me in months. <laughs> Fantastic. Ah. How would you introduce yourself? So I'm Teo. Um, I'm a United fan. I grew up loving and supporting my idol, Sir Alex Ferguson. Mm. At some point in my life, I decided to get a, an arm full of tattoos of different fish. I'm not sure why that one happened. I thought it was part of your holy trinity of passions, no? You've got football, fish, and dating apps as mm. well. Yes. Teo is huge on Bumble, so do check out his profile. Teo Ebeye, that is E-B-E-J-E-R. Check him out on Bumble. He's a sweetheart. If you like kind eyes and big smiles, he's your guy. Thanks, guys. See you. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. So Teo is a patron. If you would like to become a patron to support the show, that is three ninety nine per month. It's the minimum charge. You'll be added to a WhatsApp chat and you can join our fantasy football league next season, <coughs> which is a thing. This is when usually patrons start to actually join exactly. to be in the fantasy football league. So, I yes. am the champion. I'm the champion. Yes. I'm the champion. The winner we haven't adjusted gets enough. a kit from us. But since it was Matt, you know one gets a kit. So come prove yourselves. Prove that you've got what it takes to challenge us at Fanta Calcio and come and make us spend 80 euros, guys. Exactly, exactly. So we love having our patrons on, guys. So if you become a patron, only increases the chance. This is the third patron um, that we've had on. Ah, because Joseph Menala isn't a patron uh-huh, and uh, Sandmax isn't a patron. Not, not yet. Not yet. Not not yet. 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 Menala might join. <laughs> <laughs> um, we've had a few, actually, hey, come to think of it. Uh-huh. Um, yeah, Alan, we've had Theo, and we've had um, Lokash. Lokash. There we go. Exactly. Yeah, uh, we've also done the voice of the fans, which is, yeah, which is also a great episode. A bunch of them. Great, and they're all great people. Um, for today's episode, guys, we're going to ask Teo. Teo is a a fan of the Premier League, like we are fans of the Serie A. He's obsessed with the minnow teams. He likes um, looking at analytics and data to support his claims. He um, is a United fan at heart, but I think he's well-versed and confident to speak about many players in the league. Would you agree? Some, yes. Some, some yes. <laughs> if, you, if you give me the Monza left back, I probably can't. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Mikiria Kopoulos. Sorry, we'll be asking you about the arrivals from the Premier League and we'll be talking about, of course, the likes of Joshua Zergzi and Morata and the hot topics at the moment. So I think we could just jump straight into it, bro. Let's let's start off because the Euros just, ah, yes, just of came course. to an end and, and, and Spain are the champions. We saw the, the formidable Alvaro Morata okay. lifting the trophy, you know? What are your instant reactions? Did so, the best team win? I'm happy because... A fun team won the Euros. Mm. A team playing entertaining football. A team with wingers who like to dribble to take on their men. It wasn't purely a system. It was it was kind of the perfect balance between entertainment and good, solid structure and backbone. I like the fact that Spain won. I think they deserved it. They were fantastic from bottom to top. You know, they were they were brilliant. Theo? Yeah, I, I think um, attacking football won. Which is good, mm-hmm. good for the sport in general. You oftentimes see these like international teams go all the way without really going for it. Mm-hmm. Um, but this time, Spain were clearly the best team from the f- beginning of the tournament till the end, and again, that gives you a certain satisfaction. Yeah. Um, I think Southgate 
he deserves respect. I mean, now now we know he's left. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Time was right for him. He deserves respect as well for setting up a team that got them there. Mm-hmm. Um, but the the philosophy was never to really go for it. Yeah. Not yeah. in the way yeah. Spain went for it. Yeah. It was the same. You, please, please. I think if you look at the path as well that Spain had uh, to the final versus the path England had to the final. I mean, Spain. Obviously, they had they had Italy in their in their group. They had Switzerland in their group, um, and then they got past Portugal in the round of sixteen. Then they got past Germany, the host nation, in the quarterfinals, um, and then France, who in, individually probably have one of the best teams on paper in the entire yeah. tournament, yeah. and then they beat um, uh, they beat England in the final. Whereas England obviously had to get past Slovenia, um, that get past. Switzerland and the Netherlands, which yeah. are by no means easy tasks, you know what I mean? But in comparison, I think they definitely deserved it. Spain, they're really cool. You know, they've got the younger, the youngest player in the tournament that mm-hmm. broke records yeah. as well. Yeah. I mean, Yamal, he couldn't, there, there was that whole thing. He couldn't play past the 90th minute where Spain would be charged 30k <laughs> every time he does, yeah. which is crazy. Um, he scored, it, it, it's going to take a while until someone beats that record that he set, uh, a, a goal. Um, I believe he had just turned 17 when he scored that goal. Yeah. Um, and just overall, Rodri in the midfield. Uh, Even Carvajal, a soldier at the back, like incredible literally. tournament. By Car- Carvajal has had a fantastic season. Yeah. And, and he is not falling out of favour at Real Madrid, but obviously he's re- reaching a certain age. And at a position like right back in an Ancelotti system, for example. Think about the amount of players they've let go just to keep Carvajal, literally, the likes of bro. Hakimi, you know, you're literally. talking about, he's a soldier, man. You can't, mm-hmm. you can't bench a guy like that literally he's, literally. he's what Calabria aspires to be mm-hmm. That's he scored Cal- in, the, in the Champions League final he got the winner I believe in the oh, Champions League final the, the header I think the worst yeah. thing we saw this week is the Euros team of, of the tournament with Kyle Walker Kyle that. Walker made uh, it at right back you're serious like Kyle Walker wasn't even the best right back in the English in team. the English <laughs> team <laughs> literally and Rose somehow he made right it back. he made he made it ahead of, of Carvajal uh, he made it ahead of Kunde. It was it was weird. That's weird. That's weird. Um, one last thing I want to say is that teams like England and France setting up defensively is very cheeky. Yeah. Let's save that for the likes of Romania and Slovakia mm. to kind of try to get these mm. victories through defending and counterattacking. Uh-huh. It's just a cheeky approach by Southgate. Uh-huh. No shit, he made all those finals. But it right? wor- It works. That's the that problem. Works, like yeah. that 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 Portuguese team that won the the Euros. That wasn't yeah. a free-flowing attacking team. No. France or haven't always been the most attacking mm-hmm. either. Um, yeah. So that, Italy, in a sense, uh, I mean, Italy historically, player, yeah. yeah. Uh-huh. And I, I, there, there is that argument that for international football, you have to set up because you don't have you don't have the same amount of time with the players. Yeah. You, don't mm-hmm. have, you, you can't you can't set up that. <clears throat> You know Pep Guardiola philosophy, yeah. where everyone knows exactly what they're doing. This is a knockout tournament, right? Yeah. So, like Spain, Spain had done a period where they won the Euros, won the World Cup, and then won the Euros again. The World Cup that they won, they won every single game after the um, group stages, one nil. Every single mm-hmm. one. Netherlands in the final, one nil. They had Germany in the semis or in the quarters, which was one nil. Carlos Puyol header as well. <laughs> That's not what we want. No, no. no. Especially a... not when you're you're watching these games with like your colleagues from work who watch like three football matches a year. Yeah. <laughs> and then and then they'll watch they'll watch one boring game and they'll see, they'll look at you and they'll be like you like this. Mm. <laughs> this is what you're into. Uh-huh. It it yeah. just it, it, it just reminds me. This was by no means a, a bad Euros, but it just reminds me how fucking good the last World Cup was. Jesus Christ, yeah. man. What a World Cup. I actually enjoyed the group stages and the early stages of this tournament more than the latter stages of the tournament. I loved watching Agreed. Romania, Slovakia, Slovenia, Georgia. Georgia, Georgia Turkey, were the most entertaining were team. I think, Austria. Well. Austria, yeah. These teams were amazing to watch. Even Switzerland were fun it's to true, watch. It's, true. it's like the boring ones lived till the end. The, and better, I, uh, the better the teams got, the worse the football got. It's true. It's true. <laughs> it's true. It's true. <laughs> literally, it's true. literally. Wow. Well, yeah. Mm. But now the Euros are over. So yeah. finally, man, finally we can start seeing some action in the transfer market. Hell yes, um, and it's coming flooding, brother. <laughs> <laughs> Did you want to take us through yes. um, our talking points? So yes, we're going to be discussing the Premier League players who've come into our beloved league. And we'll take this um, step by step. We'll start with Douglas Lewis. Theo, what can you tell us about Douglas Lewis who's joined... Um, Juventus from Aston Villa in a, a three-man, three one-woman deal. 
um, <laughs> involving, of course, Douglas Louise, his spouse. I had yeah. no idea his spouse was Alicia Lehman, bro. Mm, yeah. Mm, mm. <laughs> God I, I damn. only found out because of this deal. Can you bring her up? God. <laughs> <laughs> she was with Aston Villa, right? Yes, of course. She yes, was yes, Aston yes. Villa, much like him. Alicia uh, Lehman, Teo. Uh, do, do you know her? I do not. My goodness, my gracious. Oh, wait, no, that's not what yeah, he's showing. To see. This he's is showing her to some see. Alicia Lehman highlights. She's a very good player. Look very good. Top corner. Very good. Very good. Top yeah. corner. Brilliant. Um, also, um, Baran Echea and Ealing Jr. went the other way to Aston Villa and a fee of 50 million, I believe, paid um, by Juventus to Aston Villa. Brother, what can you tell us about Douglas Luiz? So, firstly, absolutely brilliant player. I mean, Arsenal were very interested in, in him the year um, last season. There have been rumours that Liverpool wanted him as well. So I mean, this is a player that's been in the month for a while. And I was actually very surprised to see him move, especially, you know, as we've mentioned, the the, the transfer itself is a bit strange in mm-hmm. terms of the amount of money they've got. Um, but I guess his um, he wanted to leave and, and, and they thought maybe better not to sell to an English rival. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, in terms of his, his play style, so... It's interesting because the older he's gotten, the more he's uh, way a bit more forward. Mm, so interesting. if you look at his heat maps of a couple of years ago, he was a bit more defensive. Mm. In the last in the last couple of seasons, especially after Emery came in, he kind of empowered him to, to start moving a bit more forward. Now, that's, that's his strength. In a sense, Douglas Luiz can do both sides of the game. You don't want to put him behind the striker, but you're also probably not going to want to leave him as the deepest midfielder. Mm. So quite often times last season, we saw him in a 4-4-2 um, alongside Tielemans, and they'd both basically go up and down. Okay, so it's not like a, a number six role. He controls the tempo of the game a little bit more box to box. He is quite box to box to box. He can do the number six, but... It limits him. Mm. So Aston Villa actually had a, a player, Kamara, mm-hmm. and uh, he, the, the start of the season was Kamara deepest, and you know okay. he's in the team, break up play, kind of give the ball to Luis and let him do his thing. Mm-hmm. After Kamara got injured, a lot of Villa fans basically said he he got a bit worse from that point okay. on mm-hmm. because he had to do more defensive duties. Uh-huh. One thing that surprised me about Douglas Luiz, or not surprised me, one observation I made is how. Um, press resistant he is bro mm. like he's so technically gifted and he's so mm. aggressive he's, he's a unique player because he can give you that defensive he can win the ball back yeah. but then he can mm. also beat the press that comes immediately yes. after winning the ball back so I think in a Motta system he would be very useful and they're still trying to land Coop Miners can you imagine this guy and Coop Miners in the same midfield uh, with with the description Teo has given us of um, how he plays obviously Good luck to them. It it would be a great problem to have. You have both yeah. Douglas Louise um, and Tune Cope Miners in your team. Um, profile wise, if if they're both versatile midfielders that could play ample systems in the midfield, they're looking at two very similar profiles. Um, is I think Cope Miners is a bit stronger from set piece routines, maybe because he takes he takes absolutely everything. And I, I have no idea to be honest. With Douglas Louise. Douglas Louise is very good. On set He's pieces. very good on set pieces as mm-hmm. well. Interesting, but I think um, it would be interesting to see because if you look at the way Bologna played their game, so Bologna play kind of like kind of like a four one four one. It is infamously known as the two seven two system of Thiago Motta. You look at the two seven two. You start from the left wingers and you build it up to the right wingers. So you look at it horizontally. Um, it sounds odd, but it's really fucking cool. Um, And they typically have one person at the center of all of it, linking everything together. And last season, that was Remo Freuler, who we saw having a great, great, Mm -hmm. great campaign for Switzerland, one Mm -hmm. of their best players, um, alongside like Grant Schaka in in midfield. And I'm wondering who that guy is going to be for Motta, because Locatelli is Mm -hmm. good, maybe not as Mm press-resistant as, say, Mm -hmm. Douglas Lewis, Mm -hmm. for example. I would guess that it's going to be Douglas Lewis. I would I guess, would guess it makes so sense. as well. But man. the thing is, if he brings in Douglas Lewis and Coop Miners, those guys can play in any of the midfield three positions. Mm-hmm. So in a game, you could have both of them occupying positions at different times, kind of like Arbusher and Freuler mm. and even... Um, 
What's his name? The young guy who was unknown ah, from Impact. Yeah, Yatamon. Yeah, Yatamon. Yes, yes, I forgot on, his on name Panta right Culture. now. But he was, he, he looks really young. I forgot his name. He scored quite a few. Um, he would always occupy that kind of Czech artista position, ad- mm-hmm. advancing from the double pivot. And I think that would be kind of like what he tried to replicate. Fabian. Fabian, sorry. yes, thank you. I, I guess the big dilemma he would have is whether to bring in a player like Locatelli just to kind of let... Douglas Lewis be a bit more adventurous Express. going forward. Mm. Exactly, yeah. exactly. Or they, whether he wants to, yeah. yeah. And and um, they've just signed to Ram as well. Yeah, uh, I don't Kefren. know too, too much about him, but he probably he, he probably has a similar profile. And I don't think he's he's a deep kind of uh-huh. breaks down the play kind of of player. So it will be interesting to see whether he just goes without that and puts Luis mm. there or he, he fits so, Locatelli into that. Uh. Kefrem Thuram from Nice bought um, for 20 million uh-huh. is a midfielder. Good signing, He's good signing. dynamic, known for his physicality, ball carrying and defensive work rate. So again, kind of fits the small deeper, uh-huh. yeah, but can carry the ball, can drive. Uh-huh. With it. One Sounds- thing... <laughs> Sounds, like a very, Sounds like a very... Um, exciting team in a sense though. Yeah. Mm-hmm. because I mean even even when you come up against a team which is maybe a bit deeper if you play Luis as, as the, the deepest midfielder you know that everyone in your midfield is mm-hmm. going to contribute mm-hmm. going forward and that is uh-huh. I wouldn't be surprised if there are early struggles for Juve as they grow into the season uh-huh. a little that bit would more if I'm to open up the conversation a bit from Douglas Luis to Juve and to Thiago Mata's Juve Um if you look at Motta when he took over Bologna two seasons ago after Mihailovic passed away, he took over and I remember we were thinking, but Motta is playing a different starting eleven every single match. Like, what, what, what's he doing? There's this instability in the team at the moment. But what he was doing, he was trying various different players in various different roles with various different systems until he found the perfect starting eleven for his system, which included... Calafiori at centre-back and Zergzi as a lone striker, which are two things that were absolutely unheard of back then because Calafiori was a wing-back and Zergzi was either behind the striker or, or at a two up top. So I think until he figures it out completely, because you can do a lot at pre-season, but you can't perfect it mm-hmm. in pre-season. Yeah. So with the amount of players he's going to have at his arsenal, I know they still need to offload a lot of players, but it seems like they're bringing loads of new players in until he gets, until they get minutes in Serie A, ah, it's going to take a while for him to find a system that is perfect. So mm-hmm. I think they will have some early struggles until they grow into the season. Potentially, yeah, but a, a good early start could um, could give them a, the right amount of momentum they need to go forward. It all depends, I think, on the first two games, uh, mm-hmm. three games, mm-hmm. and then we'll see what happens. You know, if you don't get a result in the first two, three games, and you can say maybe it's going to take them a while. Uh-huh. But if they hit the ground running, man, uh, that team, the way the way they are, the characters they have. We saw mm. how they started last season, bro. We flicked on the TV and we're like, oh my God, Juve came to play. Like, uh-huh. you have Kiez and Vlaovic screaming and running at everyone. Like, um, So I, I guess it will very much depend on how they start. Um, but yes, there will be a tactical shift. Uh, that's obviously natural because they're moving from an Allegri system to a Motta system, which is day and night. Uh, you know? Or night and day, should I say. Night, yeah. night, night, night. Is it the end of Rabiot at, at Juve? So he has, so. Um, his contract has expired, but he's still talking to Juve. I don't think Juve are too keen on him anymore, to be honest. I don't think he's, by definition, a Motta player. I think no. that the likes of Coop Miners, Douglas Lewis, uh, Kefrem Thuram, I think they, they're exploring other options. And mm. Rabio proves to be a little bit of a hassle. His demands are high. He's a bit of a difficult... Mm. His mom is his his mom. Agent. Everyone knows his mom. He uh. shit talks everyone and always bites him in the face. So it's never cool. No <laughs> mom <laughs> no mom agent is as known as well as Rabio. It's, it's true. Really, everyone it's knows. That's true. My God. And, and it's Dr. been Ash, since he was a young boy at PSG. Uh-huh. But yeah. But uh, I, I, to, to be honest, I think Rabiot is a talent that will work wonders for a lot of teams. Like, Bro was just playing in the Euros, mm-hmm. starting for France. Mm-hmm. And he's very technically gifted. I think he, he tunnel visions a little bit, which could be a weakness of his. Mm-hmm. He's a very well-rounded midfielder, though. Especially if you need, for example some extra legs to come on that can run up and down and up and down. He's very strong. Um, he has a great stride about him. 
Milan are linked with him quite heavily. Uh, I think with the right wages I in think place, if they it's were five million honest. a season, if it's five million a season, not taken, but they're not gonna pay. It's five not gonna million. be five no. million a season. He was making seven point five, yeah, yeah, I yeah, think, yeah. at, yeah. at mm. And I think um, if you had to ask him, are you better now than you were before? The answer you would definitely get is yes. <laughs> <laughs> From his mother. From his mother, exactly. <laughs> He'd be like, he won't even just like put his finger up, get his phone out, like FaceTime his mother and just put <laughs> her in front of you, like talk to her, please. Did you see that the Calafiori deal to our and has slowed down a bit really? maybe he's on the phone with a certain Tiago Motta because he would be an excellent copy paste into Motta's system has it slowed down I didn't it's, see I, that. I saw an article about it this morning uh, that it slowed down a little bit let's see I, I thought he was pictured in training and everything no or am I going pictured mental pictured in training I, uh, I know there's been a delay it's true Interesting. Um, I don't know much about it. I thought it was all almost done. I thought it was, yeah, I thought it was, I thought it was, it was done. The verge of being done. I saw that this morning. Um, that's that's an interesting one. We've been seeing a lot of, um, and and we get into Jos was Zergzi la- later as well. But Zergzi, Calafiori, and these players that have had their first breakthrough season and are jumping straight to the Prem is a risky fucking move, huh? It's a very mm. risky move. If you're if you're playing in, in an overachieving Bologna in that season where no one's expecting you to do anything and it's all praise, all praise, all praise, then you jump to English media and the Premier League. Oh my god, how that can be career suicide. Um y- yes, for sure, but but the Italian media is no no um but at Bologna, you you understand yes, what I mean? That had, overachieving, you it's know, that critical it's on you. Yes, and yes. the whole... Like Look, everyone... at, at the end of the day, bro, um, everyone got it wrong once again. Because the player to snipe, the player to go out and spend 50 million euros on on that Italy team is not Calafiori. It's Bastoni by far, bro. Bastoni is the best centre-back in that Italy team. Calafiori is is good, mm-hmm. but he's got attributes he's that help good. him. He's very good. No, no, mm-hmm. he's he's super. He he almost redefined the the role. Mm-hmm. You know, he's unique in his in his game. He advances. He's versatile. He's got many strengths, and I'm I'm not trying mm-hmm. to um, shit on him. But I think the fact that he has what they're calling aura, which basically means that you're handsome and marketable, <laughs> makes him more appealing to these teams. Yeah, right? you have aura. Personally, I have a little bit of aura, less, <laughs> way less than Calafiori does, that's for sure. Uh-huh. I don't think I have aura until I'm on the paddle court, bro, with you. Have you, you seen... You great last week. Ah, you looked great last week. These guys, man. We looked great They're last week. Um, I love this podcast. Have you... <laughs> have you seen Bastoni of Inter? You know who he is? Yes. You know what his face looks like? You can you imagine, like... like He's not as marketable, you know what I mean? It's true. Uh-huh. If, he had, if, if he had fucking locks. Yeah, if he had you'd, long you'd, hair, you'd the headband. You'd be surprised at how much this makes makes a difference, I think. Uh, no, the way, oh, like, absolutely. Like, 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 don't tell me Harry Maguire, if he looked like Alaphiori, would have been memed in the same way. Yeah. 100%, bro. 100%. Like, it makes a difference. I believe once there was actually a thing that Real Madrid hadn't signed Ronaldinho, Ronaldinho. because of his look. I, I, I think uh-huh, aha, that, that's one of the things we all he- we all heard when we were like, uh-huh, I'm not sure. Yeah, exactly. it, like, kind of thing. But, but it's, yeah. it's 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 huge in football. Someone like, for example, Dybala was so loved at Juve, and he was good for ten games a season. Mm-hmm. But because he's La Joya and his <laughs> eyes, and on, you know, everyone falls in love good looking players I'm fucking victim of that as well give me a the halo me effect a, the, literally give me a good looking like Teo Hernandez is my favorite player he's a beast I'm also very fucking attracted to him <laughs> hugely attracted okay. to him let it all out <laughs> let it all out for me I'm, I'm, I'm the complete opposite the more fucked up a player looks, the more I like him. <laughs> like, like, you know, this guy Pavlovich oh, that we are yes. linked with, bring him in right now. I, I, full I Krug, want you. bring him in. Bro, br- give me full, full crew right now. Like. I, I want you to start watching Money Heist. Have you watched Money Heist? Yeah. You know Gandia? I can't remember. Gandia is the, like, um, one of the security guards who was, like, a military guy who's, he's, he's crazy, bro. He takes down so many of those Money Heist guys. <laughs> um, no spoilers, Pavlovich. Exactly. Pavlovich, yes. he is Pavlovich. If you look up yes. Gandhi uh, Money Heist, he's him. He covered it like he oh, covered cool, it as well. Cool. I think we can move on to the next profile unless there's anything you want to add about Douglas Luiz, mm-hmm. right? And we've got Nuno Tavares, someone mm. in the world's correcting me. It's Nuno, 
Nun Tavares. Nun Tavares. Or Nun Tavares. Nun yes. Tavares. He's gone from Arsenal to Lazio. By the looks of it, Arsenal um, were very excited to get rid of him, it seems to be, because um, it's a 1 million loan with a 6 million conditional obligation to buy. And everyone on Twitter was celebrating the fact that they finally managed to offload him. But they all wished him the best. It seems like he's a very liked player, but it's, it didn't seem to work out for him. What do you think, Theo? So... Tavares moved to Arsenal when he was quite young from from Benfica uh, and it showed to be honest. Arteta came in, started giving him some game time. Famously, I remember he subbed him off before halftime against Liverpool and I think that that marked the end of his career there. And Mm -hmm. honestly, Arteta's got... Usually, he's usually got this right since he's come in. He's known who, who to get rid of and he's known who to who to keep hold of. Um, he similarly got rid of Gendouzi. Mm. I don't think Tavares maybe has the attitudinal problems that Gendouzi had, but um, there are flaws to his game. So from from Arsenal, he went on loan to Marseille and this was so uh, mm-hmm. two, uh, two seasons ago. And he actually had a, a very good season over there. To give you a bit of an idea, um, he scored six goals that season and, and he hit two, 2.1 shots per, ta- um, okay. per game in, okay. that, in that. To give you, to give you context, um, Teo Hernandez hit less than that this season for mm. him. And he's, he's, he's a man who gets forward. Yeah, yeah. If you look at his heat map that year, I mean, dominated the left flank. You have it, you have it over there. So this is um, last season. So, so go, go. I'll take a look at the season four, yeah. Yeah, there we go. Wow. He, he, he gets all up over that, that left wing. Um, he's a player who's gonna who's gonna take shots. He's gonna he's gonna bring a threat. Mm-hmm. Um, on the other hand, a stat which which actually leapt out at me today was that he was the most dribbled past defender in the league that season. There you go. So, he fits Lazio perfectly. That yeah. is why. So so Lazio have moved on from these the Radu mold, the Marusic, the Hisai, the Hisai, the the. The sturdy, tactically Lazzari. intelligent, tough, defensive-minded fullback, and they're moving on to the complete opposite. This explosive, bombing forward who loves to take a man on but struggles mm-hmm. with defending, mm-hmm. especially one on one. With their new manager Marco Baroni, who is known to deploy a three-five-two, yep. it might suit Tavares a excellently. Mm-hmm. Yes, mm-hmm. the problem is Baroni also likes the four at the back formation, mm. so we'll have to see how he sets up because I think a three he's way more suited for a 3-5-2 mm-hmm. I think from, from what you said there's a good thing that Gila is a great recovery centre back who yeah. plays on the left hand side as well so he can allow him to get forward and, and, and cover a lot for him um, I think Baroni he likes a 4-4-2 as well but it looks like the way he's setting up um, everything is looking like a 3-5-2 for right. Lazio next, next season absolutely Um Debatable because then they also have someone like Chow now who isn't exactly going to play up top, right? And he isn't exactly going to play as a winger. So ah, it's we'll... weird. It's weird. <laughs> but then the likes of, for example, Tati Castellanos would really would benefit. Be perfect in a, in a two up top, two. Tati exactly. Castellanos. Or else go 3 4 3 because Nostlin and Chauna can play in any position I up think front. If someone plays 3 4 3, they should get off the bench. And go play ultimate team, man. <laughs> I, I really don't see 3-4-3. Three, three. You've got too many players out wide and, and, and no one in the middle. It just it screams to me like I, I, I don't understand the ball. It's all 3-4-3. Yeah, we have too many forwards. <laughs> Milan did it. Pioli was doing it two seasons ago. Like, what yeah. the fuck is going on? Yeah, fair enough. Um, fun facts about Nuno Tavares. He loves the cello and NBA. <laughs> <laughs> I can't imagine him playing the cello. I can't imagine. You can't imagine him playing right now. <laughs> Did he flop at Forest? As ah, well? What happened at Forest? At so, at F- so Forest in general was a difficult place to be last year. They they narrowly um, avoided relegation against a Luton team that had the budget that probably Jake has in his bank account. <laughs> <laughs> so not good, boys. <laughs> I mean, I mean, I mean, they should have never been there in the first place. They had. They had a f- squad bloated, you know, with way too many players. Uh-huh. No one with Premier League experience. They had Origi right? chilling there. They need to the, walk the, through like the gardens of four households to get to the stadium. To Luton, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Luton, Luton, exactly. Forest just basically, they're like that 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 kid who who play like FIFA and try to sign everyone, mm, but yeah. then there's like no plan to it. And and this is pretty much what. 
Tavares walked into. So it's 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 hard to analyze him in that aspect, and he also had a lot of injuries, mm. but. He he never. You know, he, I think he made something like eight appearances, eight Premier well, League appearances yeah. last season. So um, it's hard. It's hard to take much from that. Just that um, Nuno Espirito Santo is maybe not the greatest manager. I don't think he's an extra Alex Ferguson, mm. uh, but he's so flaws in his game as well. That's so what we'll take from that is they were fighting relegation, and Tavares wasn't the one they turned mm. to. Fair enough. I I am often um, excited. By players, there almost seems to be this trend that a player that performs well in the French League tends to perform well in Serie A. Mm-hmm. However, mm-hmm. if you look at Milan signings from Lille, almost every single one of them has worked out. Look at Leao, you look at Manyan, you look at Kalulu, you look at all Maldini, these guys that came through. Maldini used to say that the French League is <clears throat> um, physical and mm. you get players who are very in very good condition from mm. the French League. Um, and it's it's very affordable. It's undervalued. When you look at the Premier League, which is a totally over-fucking-inflated league, and you, you basically can't shop for talent in the Premier mm. League. It's very difficult. Mm. Unless you're Atalanta and you manage to get mm. Ben Guthrie for 10 million. Like, Did you, but, by any chance, watch yeah. the podcast um, on Diary of a CEO with um, Thierry Henry? No. I did. It's, I it's love, amazing. I, I love that because they speak episode. about they speak about Claire Fontaine mm-hmm. quite a lot, which is this football school in France that some of the greatest footballing legends born in France um, went through this Claire Fontaine school, okay. and it's a super super strict um, setup, basically where a lot of greats come out from. I couldn't tell you pretty much more than that, oh, okay. but it seems like it it just keeps on funneling talent and, and talent and talent. Yeah. It's one of those places where you could go because there are like the the places where you could go to learn academics um whilst juggling um so you'd have three days a week where you do sports and then two days a week where you do your academics where you do your a levels yeah. and your intermediates and all that it's one of those basically okay okay very cool that I podcast episode is brilliant Jake. Yeah. Okay, so okay. Good. Theory. 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 i love theory on ah the one where he cried i saw the clip he of did he did cry. Okay. about his dad right stephen yeah. yes and stephen barnett or barlett i can't remember of diary of a ceo mm. he's one of my favorites he asks really he's fucking good, good questions okay. i'll watch it for sure i'm i'm a big fan of the way theory on you speaks when yeah. theory talks everyone listens Literally. Aura, 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 another bold legend. So That's get this, guys. Hair, guys. Nuno Tavares in preseason training um, was photographed by by the Lazio photographers, and they posted him on on Twitter and everything and all their socials. But um, Arsenal had not actually announced that he had left yet. Oh my! So God. all the Arsenal fans just see these pictures emerging of their player in a Lazio kit training, and they're like, "What? The <laughs> why, why are we so slow?" To be honest, to be honest, I'm, I, I was still surprised that he moved there from Arsenal. Yeah. I for, uh, it's been so long since I saw him in an Arsenal shirt that I forgot that it was a thing. Wow, it's true. Fair enough. I forgot he was an Arsenal player. Now we've got um, another interesting player. Um, we're talking about Omari Forsen, brother. Now, this one came straight from Manchester United to Monza. He's um, a teenager, I believe, 19 years 19. old. Yes, um, Nesta has described him as very talented, but very shy. And he said it's going to take him some time to come out of his shell. Um, what do you make of this this move, bro, Omari Forsen? Why didn't it work out at United? I mean... He started the season being included in the squad for the first time. He's he's uh, he came to the United Academy. He okay. this is the start of his professional career essentially, um, and it seemed like Ten Hag wanted to give him a chance. You know, last year of his mm. contract, he wanted to see if if he could earn a, another contract. Um, as the season went on, you know, the whole Sancho thing happened. Strikers were out of injury. He started getting a few more minutes. He didn't look particularly ready he had he had flashes it wasn't a, a an easy setup to walk into as well but i mean ten Hag has been quite you look at his time at ix you look at what he's done at united he can he he he, he usually gets it right with the youths yeah he loves mm-hmm. a young boy ten Hag. um so he seemed to see something in him he also didn't seem to 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 get get that trust in him to be a a, a United player, 
that being said, I mean, you know, he could still turn out to be a great player, just uh-huh. it might not have been the right time. What he has mm-hmm. is that um, he's left-footed, um, so he can play on the right wing for you. He can play a bit more central as well. He filled in that striker, although that was more out of out of um, necessity, uh-huh. more than anything else. Um, so what are his strengths? Is he, or, or did he not even have the time to really show them? He didn't have much time to show them, and on top of that, he didn't look like a player full of confidence in the same mm. way Maynou did. Oh yeah, oh, Maynou yeah. Hit, the, the, hit the ground running. In he's a, a sense. freak of nature, eh, Maynou. Though he's the, the uh, exception. Exactly. So, so it's he's still a bit of an unknown quality in professional football here. Okay. Okay. Um, but he he he's quick. Um, he should be able to beat a man. I think this is exactly what he needs. He needs playing time now. He needs you know a bit of pressure off him. Mm-hmm. So. Hopefully it works out for him. Um, we don't really know much about Nesta as a manager. We know his time managing in the United States of America was, was a little bit... He described it as a disaster himself, mm. Nesta. He said that he crucified players for taking a bad first touch and that he was too strict and too uptight and he basically um, demoralized his own squad mm. uh, until he left eventually. Um it was really interesting reading his interview, bro. He said that it was like very reflective. Yeah. Um, <laughs> they were like two two years before his retirement he knew he was gonna go into coaching because his body couldn't keep up, but he, he knew he was dreading missing that adrenaline. And uh-huh. the same thing Zlatan talks about in uh-huh. his book. Um he through coaching he wants to keep his adrenaline alive. And the interviewer asked him, like, why is adrenaline so important to you? And he said, Because in my day to day life I've grown so comfortable that I don't have any adrenaline. Life doesn't give me adrenaline because probably this guy goes home, he's got an amazing house, an amazing family, mm. you know what I mean? So challenges like this, you know, mm. managing a minnow side and say, yeah, would keep him going. I mean, probably because uh, a lot of them describe it as adrenaline. I think it's getting challenges, getting out of mm. your comfort zone, doing something a little bit, uh, yes. something that drives you away. Um, it's interesting to see how, how he's going to set up um, for Monza because Monza, they had um, Paladino. Now, Paladino was the assistant manager of the manager that got them promoted to Serie A. They had a dreadful start um, in Serie A in their first nine matches. He was the under-19 manager at Juve, I believe. The Primavera well, manager uh-huh, at Juve. As well. Um, and he, they did terribly in the opening nine games of the season. The same season, they ended up becoming the most successful newly promoted team in Serie A history. And that is when they dropped the manager that got them promoted. And they brought forward their... their um, um, their second manager, their their assistant coach, basically. And Paladino has given them, I wouldn't say great success, but they've finished Comfortably. 11th, 10th, around that area as like a newly promoted team. Since, since pro- their promotion, they haven't um, even been in fear of relegation mm-hmm. for, for a, and a, a single really cool team. second. Like, they have know? really cool players. They're almost all Italian because Silvio Berlusconi, who had the Forza Italia... Right party. wing party in, in in Italy, so obviously all the players are Italian, bro. It's 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 hilarious, um, and you see them. They were they're very as well flashy. So once again, Paladino sets up a very organized unit, but he gives his players a lot of freedom. So they had the likes of uh, you, you've ever heard of Colpani. Colpani is again. He's another player with with, with that Calafiori or mm-hmm. I'm surprised no one came in and spent fifty million euros on hey. him because he's got that long hair. He's got a nice stride about him, very creative. He's a really good player, bro. And there was him. There was Daniel Maldini was actually playing really well as well. And Vignato, mm-hmm. and they were Vignato. all kind of like they they occupied the three positions behind the striker, and they would just constantly move and take each other's position. And it was mm-hmm. this free flowing, lovely counter attacking football. Aura, <laughs> yeah, there it is, the aura. Okay, but I'm excited to see Omar Forskin play for Monza. <laughs> <laughs> so, bro, this one um, is probably a bit close to home. I, I don't know why. I'm, I'm, I'm expecting to hear more negative things about this player than I am uh, positive things. And this is Rafael Varan, who seems to be going to come on a free transfer from Manchester United. Now, of course, I know the circumstances surrounding his time at Manchester United where you're getting a player who's kind of on the older side, probably his wages were really high. The situation at United wasn't exactly great for him. In his prime, huh? 
Because they signed him at like how, 29, how, how, 30. How old do you think he is? Let me start with that question. I just saw it in front of me. I know okay. he's 30 years old. I thought he was older. You thought he was older. I thought he was older. Yeah. 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 But he started wow, respect out at going Real football. at 18, bro. Ah, he started out. One of those. been around uh-huh. for ages. He has been. So, uh, what, what, what happened with Varane? So, so, Varane was brought in as, you know, this marquee signing <laughs> five like, champions leagues one world Cup. i mean I, I was over the moon uh-huh. signing him and i mean i think i think a lot of united fans reflect positively on his time um with us and he he definitely showed flashes of why he is lord as such a great defender his biggest problem was that he only played Something like his his max amount of games played in a in a season in the Premier League was twenty four. Mm. So you're talking close he to half the season. he he misses half the season, and so so like the three seasons were like twenty two, twenty four, twenty two. Mm-hmm. So you're pretty much guaranteed that you're not gonna get a full yeah. season of, of Rafa Varane. He will mm-hmm. get injured consistently. What if he's playing once a week though? Um, possibly, mm-hmm. but it's it seems like his body. Just keep just breaks down okay. a lot, okay. um, and as though as you bought it for seventy million, man. <laughs> was it seventy million? Or it says here? Uh, that's or 40, 40 million. Uh, yeah, no, the, the worst, the worst. You part, know, Comor pay nothing. nothing. The worst part is the are the wages for sure. Mm. Now, I mean the the guy the guy is um, the guy when he would play. You can see that this is a player of experience. You know, he mm-hmm. oozes this confidence. Can I just correct he... myself? It was forty million, not okay. seventy million. Okay. Forty million. He oozes confidence. He's he's a leader. Uh, he 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 missed he missed months and then came back specifically for the FA Cup final, and he was brilliant. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So he won you over there. Um, and yeah, he, he, he honestly fair play to him. Besides that, even the season before when we qualified for the Champions League, he was he was he had a very strong season. He has some deficiencies, uh, like iron. <laughs> yes, he doesn't eat enough meat. Mm. <laughs> Apart from that, he's not great at at playing mm. the ball with his feet. Mm. Oh, yeah. uh, at a point in the Champions League, he was dropped for Johnny Evans, who's wow. who's who's verging on like sixty years old. <laughs> So, I mean, that was quite a statement from Tenag when he did that. But I think in terms of the the profile of the signing, Como are making a statement, right? And that's that's one thing that... It's the umtiti move that they did, right? They're bringing winners, experienced exactly. winners. And that's they're bringing it. Pepe Reina as well, who's won everything. Exactly. Well. And I mean, these, these are signings which... Even if Varane misses half the season on the pitch, off the pitch he'll be there throughout. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And a leader like that, just to... It's huge, it's huge, it's know, massive. Even Reina. This kind of thing. Yeah, exactly. It raises the level in training Reina, as well. Reina, I'm 100% sure he's there on some similar agreement to why Fabregas was there, which is play for one season, then get into yeah, coaching over probably. there. I'm certain that Reina is going to be involved in the in, in the management of that team, either goalkeeping coach, something. He's 41 years old now. It's crazy, that? man. I'm That's sure it. he's on an agreement like that. Like, I'll, I'll actually and put you'd, money you'd down. forget how of these teams he's played with, man. This guy was at Barcelona, Villarreal, Liverpool, Napoli, Bayern Munich, Milan, Milan Aston Villa, Lazio, well. Villarreal. Like, crazy, yeah. Um, what was I going to say? That's a dressing room signing. Yeah, uh-huh. absolutely. Uh-huh. absolutely. Let's share it with Umtiti as well, where they brought in Umtiti and really raised the level alongside Baskerotta, just having those two formidable mm-hmm. guys and also just having someone that's won the Champions League with Barcelona over there. Um, Varane, I think, if you look at the way Como play, which is a lot of building the ball up from the back, in a strange way, I don't think he's a perfect centre back uh-huh, for yeah, them. Yeah. Um, however, if you're a team like Como, who's just coming up to say, uh, and you want to create this brand about you, and you've got a cool kit, and you've got Fabregas um, as the manager, and you've got Thierry Henry that's running shit like, um, and there's new brand Como, amazing city. Bring in Rafael Varane on a free, no shit like you. You, you do it. It's it's a business move. Absolutely. It's a marketing move. I like everything about it. I don't think. You, I think he, he he can still raise the level, even though he has the deficiencies that yeah. maybe don't fit Fabregas' system. No, and I, and I mean, when I say he's not great at the ball at his feet, I mean, for maybe a Champions League team, you could look mm. to get better. For a team like Como, I think he'll be fine. He'll be yeah. Fine, yeah. yeah, fair enough. For sure, for sure. And he'll be playing... Salary-wise. Uh-huh, salary-wise, God knows. So, because I don't know. Com- I have, have no money, idea. Right? 
Yes, they do, but um, I, I have no idea how much they could realistically give him. He's going to make less for sure. What was he on at United? Let's not talk about this. Please, yeah, come on, let's hear it. I think he was on close to 350k a week, something like that. Fuck me. And we're talking in pounds here. Yeah. Jesus. Without taking with a dinner. He was, he was one of the highest paid players in the squad. I think he was uh, on, a, on a contract of how long? Um, He's been with us for three seasons, I believe. Woof. Whoa. Uh, it gets worse. Yeah. Casemiro's still at the club. Casemiro's the highest paid in the club. Casemiro has always looked 40. He yeah, looks like your uncle like at the bar for you. <laughs> <laughs> really? He's not playing well because he's he, dipped. Casemiro had a shocker last season. <laughs> yeah. Bro, Casemiro. Dro- Casemiro dropped a shocker. Casemiro was great at Real because he is world class at one thing, which is winning the ball. I have a huge pair of nuts. Um, he was great. On one side, he had Tony Kroos. Um, on the other side, he had Modric. Yeah, when yeah. one of them got injured, he had Fede Valverde exactly, over there. Yeah. And he was great at being the balance over there. I remember Real didn't have, when they were playing Valverde across Modric, they didn't have an anchor. They didn't have, in history, they always have. They've had Gravison as a central defensive midfielder who was shocking, but they needed him for balance. That Lasana Diara, yeah. super interesting. Who the fuck is Lasana Diara? Who the hell is Mamadou Diara? Yeah, which I is know. another one that they had. They just always have this defensive midfielder. Fuck it, go in there, break shit, bro. It yeah. doesn't, it doesn't matter. <laughs> and the thing is, people like United look at him <laughs> like, God damn it, bring him in. He's gonna, he's gonna change it for us. <laughs> Without knowing yeah. maybe the full, the, the full On, picture. Honestly, first season he was very good. Mm. Last season, it's like his legs capitulated. I've, I've never <laughs> seen anything like it. <laughs> but there was a point where, where, where I, I, was, I was flying back and I had to make a stop in Turkey. No, I didn't get a hair transplant. <laughs> As you can see. I, I stopped, I stopped in, in, in Turkey. He's got dreadlocks on there. <laughs> <laughs> I stopped in Turkey. And I decided to watch the United match on my phone against Everton. These are always the best. I've yeah. never, ever seen a player give the ball away as many times as he did in the first half. It was, it was actually a Not master even Amrabat. Class. No, and, and bringing Amrabat into conversation, the season ended with, with Amrabat starting in the FA Cup final. Casemiro dropped. And reportedly, Casemiro didn't want to be on the bench for that. Oh, so wow. that's how the season ended. United went with, with, with an Amrabat that they decided not to sign ahead of Casemiro, who's the oh, highest paid no, player no. in the squad. That's oh, a mess. No, I'm no. sorry, but, but the way United are run leaves a lot to be desired. This we, season we so far, it looks day. better. We don't, we don't need if, to do There are a million podcasts about it. If we're going to do this, you can grab me another video. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the Zergs is signing, I love. So the, the, Zerg... the, the way they're looking at the licked and, 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 and the business change, over there. We, we, we changed um, owners, let's say. Uh-huh. Leaders are still there, but they have... Uh, They've taken a step back? Mm-hmm. Have, yes. That's good. Like, the, uh, like you, you look at United and you see them signing names mm-hmm. in the past. So Sancho, for example. Okay, Sancho, it's a shock that he didn't do too well, to be honest. Um, but Casemiro is another one. And to be honest, no one else is really coming but, to mind. But it's no secret that like it's it's big name signings, splashing cash on them. You know they got Ronaldo back for a hundred million. It's like sure, cute. Well, you stopped them from you're, going. You're 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 lo- inflating these prices. Uh? How much was Ronaldo? Actually, it was, it was quite cheap. Yeah, I mean, how much was Ronaldo? Not a hundred million. No, no, no. That was that Juve. Was Juve. That was Juve. Juve. From Juve, Juve, they were eager to get rid of him, so the price actually wasn't bad. But then his salary was like the price of three. Yeah. <laughs> um. But everyone just takes United for a ride, man. Everyone just yeah. milks them dry, bro. How much did you pay for the Atalanta kid? 40 million. No? 40 million. 40 million for Hoyland. For, for Hoyland. No, not Hoyland. The, the kid who uh, had barely uh, played. Uh, uh, Ahmad Traore. Yeah, yeah that's uh, the head Diallo, against Milan. Ahmad Diallo, Ahmad Diallo Ahmad yes. Diallo. Ahmad Diallo is coming into his own. So yes, it actually, was an investment for the future, yes, but yes. there was no, was, no, no way it was, it was worth that much. It was a big price. It was ever, even Hoyland. Hoyland was, I'm sorry, they overcharged. But Hoyland is for the future. They signed yes, a 19-year-old Hoyland, have, 20-year-old Hoyland. Atalanta have their core, their spine, and they're constantly selling the players who aren't pivotal to their spine for mm. inflated prices. Uh-huh. So they're actually selling replaceable players, making them seem like the system is yeah. reliant on these guys. But in reality, it's it's, it's Derun, it's Coop Miners, hey. it's these guys, Scalvini, it's these guys mm. keeping it together, you know? And th- their business model is second to none. 
Atalanta. Uh, Atalanta do it best out of all the teams yes. in, in, in Italy. Um, I'll never forget when I started an FM with Atalanta and every week I would just get an email saying, Miss Ma, sign him, he's great, sell him, you'll make loads of money for it. And I just did whatever the team told me to and I won the league that season. Like, it was ridiculous. They did everything for me. It's like the game knows how good they are. It's amazing. Ronaldo went United for 15 million, by the 15 way. 15 million. 100 million. Jesus. Wow. Yeah. Got that one completely wrong. So now we've got a guy to discuss who's got two. Actually, while we're on the topic of United, I think we should talk about Zergzi a little bit. Let's. Let's. How do you feel about Zergzi? We wasted our entire transfer market waiting for Zergzi. Don't and worry, I, I, I know that feeling. Yeah. I unfollowed him on Instagram. Of course. You've showed him. I've sh- I have showed him. <laughs> showed I've him. showed him. Um, I, in general, I really like the profile of the signing. The price is, is good. I think it's a step in the right direction already in that reason. You know, a young player had a great season in Serie A. I believe he, he won young player of the, the season in Serie yep. A, right? Fantastic. Um, he fits the profile of the player where Ten Hag is looking for. Mm-hmm. So he's a he, he's a pressing monster, which we love. Drops yeah. deep, occupies the wing. Drops deep, you know. Um, what we struggled with maybe last season is is um, creating the chances we wanted to for our wingers. Um, and he can do this. He can he can he can get the ball and feed Rashford and Garnacho. So he has runners running in behind. Um, my main curiosity is seeing him with or instead of Hoyland. United will have 50 games, something like that, yeah. with the Europa League. So either way. How did you manage to qualify mm. in the end? Because of the FA Cup. Oh, oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks to Amrabat. Hey, you qualified. Thanks to Amrabat. God bless him. <laughs> really... um, but, I mean, it's good to have two young players competing for the same spot in that in that aspect because you don't have that ego. I mean, when Ronaldo was there, I really didn't like that profile of signing because you 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 have to play him every game. Yeah, you know. Yeah. Even with Varane, when he was fit, he had to play. These mm. players cost you the euros. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, I mean, I I can't stand having a player who's past his best, but. Ha- but insists on playing because of his yeah. name. Uh-huh. It kills the team. Unless kills you're everything. Lionel Messi, exactly. I don't, uh-huh. you shouldn't be starting every game for sure. Yeah. You know, I don't think it's... At, at the moment, uh, what's your depth like up top, United's depth? I think, it, it, isn't it just Hoyland and, and Ziggs yeah, at the moment? Yes, because because Martial... Um, is off. Martial has been yeah off for mm. the last five years. Rashford and is a winger nowadays. Rashford plays wide. Garnacho's wide. Sancho and Ten Hag supposedly just made up after like a yes, public, they're friends now. Uh-huh. After like a public spat which went on for like <laughs> literally six months. <laughs> But then I just came out this week and said, "Don't worry, we drew the li- we drew the line." Mm-hmm. And so that's like the, it's it's mm. it's like when you when you break up with your ex girlfriend and like for months on end you're talking about how bad it was and how you're so past that and how she just wasn't the one for you and then one day you just send a little text message and you're like, "Actually, we're back together." Now. <laughs> you just post an Instagram story no, together, no, like that's yeah. brilliant. Everything's fine. Is there any um? Truth behind the the Ivan Tony links, because well, it wouldn't make sense. No, you you've got two potential stars nothing, you bring in. Nothing real right now. Because uh, um, my my point is, I don't think it would make sense that the vision would be starting them two up top when they're your only two fucking strikers. No, I don't think. Know? And Ten Hag doesn't usually play with two strikers, right? No, he, he, yeah, it's always been one. He'll play. He'll play with uh, with with you know two wingers and and Zerzi or Hoyland, I think. I th- think bro with with the way he plays and the strikers who have found success with Ten Hag like Tadic Tadic, Tadic played a false mm. nine and Zerzi and Zerzi and he did uh-huh. really well yeah, very yeah. true great so point. I think great I think bro um, Zerzi might be the guy uh, Hoyland looks gassed for the next season he's been posting Hoyland like, Hoyland is a fucking monster Hoyland's is, is. a machine bro and, but I like think about it with I love, Atalanta I like Hoyland, I Hoyland. Love Hoyland. he's gas bro and, he's and gas. honestly Hoyland will sit on the bench and when you bring him on he'll make you regret not playing you know, he's that type of player I think up final he did exactly that nice. came on for his cameo 15 minutes uh, and he was such an underrated turn of pace as well bro he had absolutely th- these runs that he that does the way he carries the ball forward on the counter is yeah. genuinely super super impressive he's Holland from Wish exactly but so, Zergs you should be so pumped for him yeah. how I wish 
you were over and were watching like 90 minutes of Bologna against Roma, for example. Just those games. So he, he is literally, you know, oh my God, this is a great comparison. You remember Rooney when he played as a striker for Sir Alex Ferguson, how yeah. deep he used to drop back and give those yeah. high balls oh. to the wingers, wingers and then charge in to get to the far post to the center of the box and get that last touch in? Mm-hmm. Xerxes. He often does that, that's true. Xerxes. Um, Except he, 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 he's six foot five. Has or six foot four, four, four. Has the touch of Zlatan Ibrahimovic. I, I've heard the the heading abilities. So he, that's uh-huh, what I was going true. to say. So if you if you're banking on this guy being your twenty goal a season striker, it's not the case. That's, no, it's not going to be the case. He However, scored twelve the season. The season before he scored like two. Uh-huh. His what what he offers. In fact, I think this would be a good transition. I know it goes in the order, but it's it. I think it would be great. Mm. Um, what he offers and what Morat offers are very similar in a way. Xerxes, of course, is way more technically refined. He's mm-hmm. a younger profile. He's um, taller. He's more physical. But at the end of the day, these are two strikers who aren't prolific, but they make the players around them prolific. Mm-hmm. So Xerxes, for example, is a good signing for United, but he's not going to be the one banging in all the goals uh-huh. per se. He's going to make Garnacho better. Yeah. He's going to make the players around him much better. Mm. And it's the same for Morata. Bruno Fernandes is going to be insane with Zegs. It's just it's the same way Ferguson was insane Perhaps. with Zegs. But then also, um, United's a tough environment uh, to, to do well as well. So it's, uh, huh? No, Ferguson um, um, attacking with uh, either Scotsman. For Bologna. Yeah. No, no, no. Lewis Ferguson. L- Lewis, um, Lewis Ferguson, Ferguson yes. Uh-huh. Poor guy did his ACL before yeah, the Euros. Before the Euros. Yeah. I was telling you, he's their star man. You're like, no, Scott McTominay is their star man. I agree with nothing. So, <laughs> Milan are closing in on Alvaro Morata. Got the here we go from, from Fabrizio no, Romano. Wait, it's the first time I saw a here we go soon. Uh-huh. <laughs> here, we go, here we go. I, lo- I love how Romano hits you with the breaking, uh, almost done. <laughs> how is it breaking if it's up, almost man. done? Yeah, yeah, yeah well, please. Would love Click to have you. would love to have <laughs> um, 13 million, salary of 5 million a season. Um, 31 years old, going to be 32 in a few months. Just lifted the, F- just lifted the Euros. Signed on a four year deal. Now, I'm not. Um, I, I'm a fan of the deal. I'm a fan of the deal. It has to be said. I think it's a no-brainer. I think when you look at it from an operations perspe- perspective, it makes a lot of sense going for a 13 million guarantee than a 40 million wild card. It's mm. true that the 40 million wild card could give you a lot in the future. Mm-hmm. Like but for the team card, that Milan have and for what's happening in the league around Milan, mm. you need guarantees. Mm-hmm. You need someone who's been getting. You think double... Zergzi for Milan wouldn't be a guarantee? No, because Zergzi, what, what he did at Bologna, he did it once in one season, mm. and that's not something that can even be, I think, debated. Because he had a fantastic season, but he's only done it once. Morata mm. has been scoring at least ten goals in the league that's true. for that's years true. and years and years, ever mm-hmm. since he started out at Real Madrid. But he is also like, like if we're talking Zergzi Morata kind mm. of thing. Um, Morata isn't sharp Like in front of goal If you need a guy That's going to get you a goal He is the infamous row Alvara Matara Yes However Alvara Matara Had his best ever Goal scoring season Last season He scored 21 Not goals Not all... shit for Atleti This season though. No I, th- I think he, The season he's coming off He scored 21 goals Bro I'm pretty no sure No way No He had a terrible season This I season I thought he was coming off That's why they, they, want, they want him out Alvaro Mor- I thought he was convinced to leave. Uh, let's check Coco transfer. Coco Correa, so come on, Paella. <laughs> so baby, the Estrella. He's doing too much, yeah? Coco yeah, he's Correa. doing way too much. Um, who scored? I should check, actually. Who scored Morata? Who scored Morata? Who scored Morata? Was Just Morata once in the scored? Euros. <laughs> no, I get you because he... He works a lot for his teammates. So, yes, look at this, bro. Last season, 15 goals in La Liga. Five goals in the Champions League. One goal okay, in the European Championship. Yes, in fact, it's 22 in total, including the Euros. 21 excluding the Euros. That's his best ever, most prolific goal-scoring season. Oh, yeah, so, I read an article that said he did shit. No, no, no. It's your that, that pretty much sums up the opinion on Alvaro Marata. He's an incredibly divisive player, yes. right? Mm. Like... You wouldn't expect that from the striker of the, of the team that just dominated the the Euros. Yeah. But 
So it's it, it you get this feeling watching Spain and watching Morata in general where you feel like there could be someone better there doing mm-hmm. exactly what he's doing but just a bit better. That's mm-hmm. that's a, <laughs> frustratingly as a player. Um but then we also have to appreciate what he's done well. Mm-hmm. And I mean at the Euros it was clear to see in terms of work rate he did something that Harry Kane didn't. Absolutely. You know, the pressing from the front was brilliant. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. The way he would hold up the ball and, as you mentioned, bring bring the wingers into play and they had two excellent wingers. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's going to help. He empowered that, them. Yeah. That's going mm-hmm. to help Leao without a shadow of a doubt. Absolutely. But then on the on the other end of the coin, he he never looked like he was going to score. I exactly. mean, which is just strange in a, in a team like that, you know? Mm. The amount of bets I lost because Bet365 kept dangling the carrot of over <laughs> 0.5 shots on target for uh-huh. Marata at Man. incredible odds. <laughs> and I take it. <laughs> and, it would, and, he would, and I'd watch the match and I'd think, Christ, I should have... I should have placed the, the, this money on like Kukureya, but like uh. yeah, absolutely not Morata. Like he was so he was so far away from scoring. Mm. Yeah. Um, and we have to also take into consideration the fact he's he's hitting thirty two. Mm-hmm. He's probably not going to be getting better. He's going to be getting worse. If if he yes. is the 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 main, if he's going to, if Milan go into the season with Morata as their starting striker and Jovic as the bench option. No, no, no. There will be. I, I can tell you, there will be another striker for sure. Because it's not possible to go in with two strikers, judging from what happened to Milan historically. We Milan have always had three strikers and ended up with one or none. Mm. That's been the situation for ages now. Mm. Um, compared to the strikers Milan have grown accustomed to, he's a spring chicken, Morata, mm. yeah. thirty-two years old. You know, Milan have been playing with Giroud and Zlatan up front for for way That's too true. long now. I think Milan will buy another striker. I also think that something changed in the priority of Milan in their plan. Mm-hmm. Because before it was 40, 50 million on Zergzi. Mm-hmm. And all of a sudden, it seems they're settling 13 million on Morata. We're getting something similar. Uh-huh. Let's call it something similar in, in, for next season. Oh, Not yeah. in the long uh-huh. run, something uh-huh. similar. Um, and you have that money that you can invest in elsewhere. Mm-hmm. So I wonder what the plan is now. They, they want this, this center back, Pavlovich. He shouldn't, he shouldn't cost too much. There's Fofana. Fofana's being mentioned. I, I, apparently, Emerson Royal is falling through because Kalulu. Like Kalulu. I mean, nice, I love Fonseca for that already eight, because Kalulu eight. is literally the guy for that mm. position. You, you remember him with the French under 21 team. He dinked the keeper, bro. Ex- bro he, he's so good in that position. He's defensively sound and he's a menace going forward. Not a menace, but he's good going forward as yeah, well. He was one of Milan's main stars defensively. When they won the league. When they won and nine one nil games in a row. Literally all one nil, one nil, one nil, one nil, one nil, one nil at the last stretch yeah. of the season. Like it just was, consistent. It was amazing. It was amazing. Kalulu is good, man. Yeah, and now he's taken the number five. I'm very excited to, to see him in that. Yeah, but number I'm 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 a fan of this of this Alvaro Morata number deal. Five. I think it's I think it's a smart move. Um Especially if he, if someone else is brought in. What are your expectations of what Morata? Would, what would you be happy? I with? expect a reliable striker. I expect intense pressing and movement. I expect to not feel like uh, my team is a man down because our striker can't keep up. <laughs> For thirteen million, you know, if he gets fifteen mm-hmm. goals, I'm I'm over the moon to mm-hmm. be honest with you. And again, I expect him to to liberate the the wingers, and I expect like Pulisic to play off him a lot uh, more than Leao. Yeah, perhaps lost the streak. Perhaps I think coming he's in have from a deep good season um, because yeah. of his late runs into the yeah. box mm-hmm. when Morata mm-hmm. drops deep. I think that's going to be a thing of beauty. One thing that concerns me is not only about Morata. So, like I said, Morata, I don't like him in front of goal at all. Mm-hmm. If he's ever in a situation Support where he needs to shoot, yeah. he scares me. Um, I often compare him and Lukaku as the two guys that instinctively they're just not there. Mm. Um, Whereas strikers, they tend to be great instinctively, right? When they don't have time to think, they just have a crack. They don't seem to be that kind of mold of of, of strikers, Mm -hmm. um, which is quite concerning. Uh, um, But, uh, sorry, I was going to say about my concern. Um, Not only Morata, but in Fonseca, a system that encourages the wingers to play more narrow and closer to goal. Great for Pulisic. Worried about Leao. That yes, that yes. Because Leao, people say, ah, because he his numbers aren't high, his numbers aren't high. His numbers aren't high, 
not because he doesn't play close to goal, but because he's poor in front of goal. He has had moments where his finishing looked excellent, moments where he looked like Thierry Henry when he was playing as a winger. He's looked incredible at times. But honestly, in front of goal, he is really, really weak. I don't know if it's weak in front of goal, because in these one-on-one situations, he hardly misses. The problem is that he, mm-hmm. he tends to have... Last season, he missed loads. But from, because he has a crack from dubious angles and uh, situations where he shouldn't even be thinking about shooting, and he, and he shoots. To be fair, to be Because it's true, in right. one-on-ones, he often right. slots it past the keeper, can't fair, you know? Right. Um... Yes, I'm, I'm, I'm very curious to see how Leo, Leo will do. And on the other hand, Pulisic and Chukweza, I think, will thrive in, mm-hmm. this, in this system coming in. Chukweza and Fonseca, I really love their relationship. Yeah, you saw, you saw uh, how he's, how he's like, cuddling him in training. Mm, the, the, the Chukweza is getting like, really special attention from Fonseca. Like, he's making him run and Fonseca was holding his shirt to like, increase his strength. He was telling him, like, you have to dribble more with your arms, yeah. you have to shoot people and, up. Imagine at that level. Like, like it's, I it's, often forget that there's still a lot of coaching to be done with yes. players in their 20s. Yes. Like he's telling Chukweze, who had a brilliant season at Villarreal, for example, mm. you think he knows this. He said, him, use your arms, shield your body when you're dribbling. Mm. You think Pioli never told him this. Hey, 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 you know what I mean? Like, well, oh no right. shit. Maybe that's Pioli right. told him, don't ever yeah, don't, use your arms. <laughs> <laughs> you have to dribble like this. Arms in, bro. arms in. <laughs> <laughs> but I guess that, that's why... I mean, it's as simple as that, right? Certain players thrive yeah. under certain coaches of very particular instructions that Absolutely. they get as well, right? Not yes. only because they fit the system. That's true. I think we should move on to the man with two first names. <laughs> I know which one. Ben got to say, ah. Everton to Atalanta for 12 million in what is being hailed um, a steal from people who seem to, who, who, who follow the Premier League. So maybe not a steal okay. because of because of how his stocks plummeted over the years. But uh, to give you some content context, Ben Godfrey um, broke through in the in the Premier League for Norwich uh, about five six years ago, something like this. And four years ago, Everton splashed out twenty to twenty five million on him. It was a big signing at the time. The manager who bought him was Carlo Ancelotti. Wow. Mm. So Ben Godfrey came in. Um, and from the, at that point, it looks like he would be the future of Everton at at centre back. I'd say he's been he'd be very disappointed with how it's gone over mm. these last four years. He ended up firmly down in the pecking order. To some extent, I mean, it's, he's been unlucky because a mix of injury and then last season there was Tarkowski and and Jared Brantwaite, which are. Actually, it's it's probably mm-hmm. one of the best centre back pairings in in the league. What he has, however, is the fact that he is incredibly versatile. Like this is a very versatile defender. He's played at left back. He's played at right back. He's primarily a centre back. Mm. Even had played it at as a defensive midfielder when he was in mm. at Norwich. Atalanta play three at the back. Yeah, mm-hmm. so. I f- think he's gonna be slotting in there mm. in that center back, that center back role. But what 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 probably appeals um, to Atalanta is that he can play on the more the, the flank of the center back. Mm. Let's say mm. he's quick, he's strong, he's vocal. So he has he has what it takes. I like the signing. I think it's a really really nice signing. If you speak to an Everton fan, they'll probably tell you he's rubbish though. Okay. So. It's hard to arrive at Atalanta and be rubbish. I don't see it often. They yeah. are a team which rejuvenate that, careers. Uh-huh. They they buy intelligently, like and un, un, unless Gasparini doesn't like you from the get from the get go, from the get go. If he hates he is, you from the get go, you're is, done. If bro. his first words about you aren't positive, then you're this, you're this fucked. This guy Bucker went in. And the, the, the I think he watched him train once. He told me, yeah, guys, this this this, this Bucker, I don't know. I, then, like he showed how uncertain he was about him. We went to watch Cagliari Atalanta. He brought him on, played him for ten minutes, took him and off took again. him out immediately. Immediately, immediately. We, we were taunting him, the yeah. poor guy. Like we really thought. How bad do you have to play to get subbed off in ten? Hey, minutes? bro. So, to be honest, hey. he wasn't even that bad. Hey, he hey, just, hey, he hey. has hadn't grown into the game right. yet. Like, but no one really had. But um, Ben Godfrey, I, I, I think from what you're saying, it fit in well to Atalanta's system. Atalanta are sorted with the centre back that is the anchor. That stays at the back, and that is Jim City. Um, Jim City is is one of those no bullshit centre backs. 
Pialaus Scalvini, who is a 19-year-old, the future of Italy defenders. Think of what Calafiori is right now. Um, by the time Scalvini is his age, would have surpassed him, in my opinion. I think Scalvini is so fucking good for an 18-year-old, 19-year-old. He's, he's turning 20 now, I think. He is, for one of those ball-playing midfielders, charges up. He did this thing against Milan, remember, when he... Dribbled a player, got tackled, tackled him back, lost oh, the ball, yeah, tackled yeah, him yeah, back, yeah. and then had a crack and hit the post. Like, oh, yeah. that's insane drive, insane vision. Like, he really inserts himself in, in opportune areas where he could get a goal as well. So, he's a bit more of the adventurous centre back. Um, and and then fact- that leaves typically last season, it was Kolasinac. Uh-huh. Ben Godfrey could be a potential um, improvement to, to Kolasinac. Yes, um, Godfrey, though, I believe, has been brought in to replace Scalvini at the moment because he's done his ACL. Let's ah, not forget. Mela. He couldn't even do the Euros, but it will be interesting to see them all together. Mm. Absolutely. Um, how ACL big... ACL for Scalvini, I think was it? Was, it? I think it was ACL. It was a serious injury for sure. It was a long term. And I believe this, the signing is for this reason. Um... Ben Godfrey loves a scrap. He loves yeah, a scrap. You'll find, Love you'll, you'll find some great footage of him and Haaland going at it. Yes, yeah, it's fifty-fifteen, like uh, just a uh, just a uh, sort of beef throughout a match. Love it. So uh, he, he mean, talks a lot. He He's talks a lot, nice, and, nice, and, nice. and Haaland talks even more. Yeah, yeah. Haaland loves a loves a chat, and apparently he farts on the opposition. Might have farted on Godfrey, I wouldn't be surprised. Well, Holland, Holland. Ah, and, Holland. And, and, there's yeah. a, there's a, and, and there's when asked about it, he said he drinks a lot of milk as well. No, or something like that. There's a video of Holland, was it Holland, saying, like, saying you stink. Ah, someone was telling Holland, like, like Jesus I don't know, but, Christ, like he was know, laughing. I don't know if it was from Holland or to Holland. No, to Holland. I don't Holland, even know if Holland was even in it. <laughs> some, some, I some, some, some football someone video. stinks. <laughs> Ah, no, no, I think it was, I think it was Diego Costa, uh, okay. Ryan Shawcross back in the day. Is someone knocking? No, I highly doubt it. We can ignore that. Okay. <laughs> so it's, like it's the person noise. locked in my basement. It's your inner thoughts. Yes. <laughs> so while we're on the topic of Atalanta, so very excited for Ben Godfrey, the man with two first names. And um, they've also signed Nicolo Zaniolo, mm-hmm. um, who's got robotic knees nowadays. Yes, um, two of them. Man. Two of them, yes. He's done both ACLs. Um, he was the shit back in the day. Mm. The shit he was. Like, he, he was probably at a young age because he, like... Hit stardom with Chiesa, burst onto the scene with Chiesa. I preferred Zaniolo yeah. when they were both when they were both virgins to injuries. Like people, they've both been plagued, man. People used to mock Inter for trading Zaniolo for Nangolan. That's how good mm-hmm. Zaniolo was. And um, nowadays he's twenty five years old. Um, so still there's still a bit of time for him. He's been playing in Turkey and he's been brought in by Atalanta. Who and I wonder last year he was a <laughs> villa last year as well. <laughs> completely, completely flopped, he was right? Terrible, right? Um, he looked honestly a level below the rest of the squad. He just he just didn't really have anything about him. Mm. Uh-huh. It's it's a calculated risk, I believe, um, for for Atalanta. They're bringing him. You on don't a... imagine him getting jacked and just. I, I do him imagine him him improving his physical condition immensely yes. upon arrival. I know that the the loan fee was six point four million, so I assume they will be. Considering redemption or prioritizing redemption to be honest, because you don't just pay six point four mm-hmm. million for to loan mm-hmm. someone in, yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, but I do think he can he can be mm-hmm. re- reintroduced or remade into a system player. Mm-hmm. Um, definitely not to the level that he had done it mm-hmm. when he was at Roma. No. There was a goal, bro. After this, remind me, I'll show you a goal against Sassuolo, Zaniolo. Know had like four players on the floor while he's just fake shotting and he just walks into the net and strips the keeper. Like it's just incredible to me. I think it's 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 the move he needed almost. If 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 you're ever struggling with your career post injuries and, and you don't know where your place is, you don't know where your position is, call up Gasperini and join Atalanta yeah, man. Yeah. Because any kind of identity crisis that you'll ever have will be sorted out immediately. This is just for football. <laughs> no in general bro, in general. <laughs> Thank you. Call Gasperini. Um what was I going to say? Interesting to see how he'll fit in. Now, I know that at times they play this three at the back system where there's almost like two attacking midfielders mm. um, that stray wide. So like Lukman being one of them, CDK or Skamak up front and then maybe on the right hand side, mm-hmm. Sasha attacking mm-hmm. midfield. That could be Zaniola's area. I think it would suit him 
but, technically better than it would on the wing. Aha, uh-huh. but um, Mourinho for Roma before he let him go because he absolutely despised him. He's playing him as a striker and a two up top. Imagine, imagine. Mm. And Gasperini will try everything, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, very excited to see how Zaniolo does and who will take him on Fanta Calcio, who will be the bold guy Literally. to take him. Um, maybe our listeners or the bold people will take him, maybe our patrons, maybe our new patrons that are subscribing right you're, now. You're joining the, our Fanta Calcio League next season. Why not? Because no, you ba- tell me. He... I'm, what did you think? <laughs> <laughs> did you, have you joined once? No way, you were going to join. No, I was going to join, but uh, commitments got in the way. But But you know what? I'm ready this year. You ready? ready? Ben, Top. ben Godfrey. Ben, ben Godfrey. <laughs> ben Godfrey. He's, taking him in. He's gonna buy all these guys that were in red. I'm just gonna get the Brexit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Brexit FC. Um, Moise Keen, or should we call him Moist Queen? Am I right? Um, from Juve to Fiorentina, he's only 24 years old, despite That's playing crazy. football for almost a decade. Because he burst onto the scene at 16 yeah. years old, scoring goals and these crazy mm. dance moves with Juventus. Finally, Fiorentina took one of Juve's guys. Ah, fine. Hey, Congratulations, hey. Yes. guys. You took more skin from a them. A clip has gone viral of him missing this target practice challenge, but it turns out he was playing against was kids playing and he was letting them win. I fell victim to it and shared it and got the views. No regrets. <laughs> Um, <laughs> but I'm I'm interested to see what he does over here. He definitely needed a change of environment. Am I optimistic about it? I don't know. I don't know. I'm not optimistic about it because I know how Fiorentina are. Like if you look at the, it's such a Fiorentina signing. And and and, and plus, just keep in mind how many go. Answer this question: How many goals did Moiskin score last season, and how many minutes did he play? He played quite a few minutes. He scored zero goals. He he hasn't had a prolific season, can we say ever? Yeah, <laughs> yes. yeah, you can, you can. Yes, like he has lived off hype throughout it's, his it's, career. It's, it's a classic Fiorentina move. Fiorentina are the same guys that signed Jovic from Real Madrid. They're the same guys that signed who who else? Man, what other? In Zola from uh, Spets. Yeah, yeah um, they almost Cabral, Cabral, yeah. Piontek. However, 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 I think we need to observe, since it's Paladino this time, let's observe Monza, because we don't really have much of a case study to see how how Paladino likes to use his strikers, mm. because he's had very different profiles. He ended up playing with Juric. And, and Moiskin is a very well-rounded striker. Yeah. He's, he's great physically, he has a good shot he's on him. He's got good technique as well. Air. One of his strengths is his technique. Once he came on against Milan, bro, it drove me mad. Like Yeah, I, I remember that game. It's a flashes player. Yes, mm. absolutely. But he, he totally. hasn't he hasn't had a season where he's been just consistent. No. It's all, if, if he never played in the league, he, no one would be attracted into bringing him into the league. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? He's just a name that, that just mm-hmm. lingers around. Yes. His... But he, he also probably hasn't had a season of, of consistent game time. Mm. So That's... maybe this will be his first time and, and, and absolutely, we'll yes. see what he's made of. Mm. Yeah, his loan at PSG was all right. 26 games, 13 <laughs> goals. That's how, pretty good. How does he end up? He's played for PSG. He's played for, for Juve. Everton, Hellas, Verona. <laughs> Everton, Ancelotti had brought him on and yes. taken him off immediately yes, as yes, well. Yes, eh? yes, yes. 32 was, games for Everton, two goals. Yeah, That wasn't his best. No. Mm. No, not at all. Um, uh, he, he's it wasn't his worst it. either. He's <laughs> <laughs> He is going to do better than Inzola. Yes, he for and, sure. and he is a well-rounded striker. It's just like you're saying, he hasn't... Yeah, he's never really hit the ground running. Absolutely. Is it a good stage for him to do it? He's got a good manager. He's surrounded by good players. It's just Fiorentina strikers are fucking cursed, mm. man. I'm mm. not too hopeful about it. Absolutely, yes. Um, so that is it for the Premier League players that have been brought in. There are a few interesting things that I would like to discuss um, we can start off with the centre backs that Napoli have been signing. So Napoli are going on a rampage right now with um, Conte. By the mm-hmm. way, ah yes. So first of all, I need to apologise to Lena, who is Slovenian, one of our patrons, um, for saying that um, Georgia were the smallest team to take part in the Euros. I found out that it was actually Slovenia who are the smallest team who took part in the Euros. The population of two million. Let's not get into how. I thought that um, Georgia was the smallest nation. Um, I should have I fact was, checked. I was not just believe. texting. Yeah. 
<laughs> if we if we have to fact check everything I text. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so so I apologize I knew for that. I knew just Lena. That might be correct, man. Because I didn't know. Already, <laughs> obviously. Um, also, yes, um, I need to say as well because it's something that a, a Napoli fan, Cody, shout out to Cody on TikTok, um, DM'd us with some information about Ooh. about Napoli. He's a massive fan. Apparently, the season ADL is taking a step back. Mm-hmm. Because he's always Thank so involved. God. He's always so involved. But he, he, he's and got a new movie coming out. After, I love saying that because yeah. he was like a movie director or something. That, After yeah. the carnage that he led Napoli to last season, changing Disaster. the managers, Three berating times. his players. Literally. It was horrible. The, one of the worst title defenses I've ever seen. The worst title defense I've seen in my life. And I'm Maltese. So God <laughs> knows in the Maltese league what we've seen when it comes to title defenses. Um he has finally accepted maybe that I'm I'm going to hire a professional manager in Conte, a, a, a serial winner, someone who if I I don't need to interfere, I can just give him the tools he needs and hope he success mm-hmm. succeeds, right? He's taking a step back and Napoli are moving big in the market. They have brought in Bongiorno, for example, huge, which is a massive huge, signing. Huge. Have you heard much of Bongiorno in your lifetime? I'm resisting too many jokes. Please, please, please. Way too many, way too many jokes. Or Bonasera. <laughs> Bonanotte. <laughs> These are all players, by the way. They've all existed. Bonanotte. Bona There's a Brighton player. Yeah. Bonanotte, yes. There we go. So what do you think? I don't. You don't know anything about them. Okay, and um, there is also, I had it somewhere, but I've lost it, so I've been trying to buy some time. Ah, Rafa Marin from Real Madrid for 12 million. He's a promising um, defender from Real Madrid's youth setup, who's known for his um, composure on the ball. Mm. He's more of a ball-playing centre-back, and he can also defend quite well. He has the potential, apparently, to develop into a pre- a top-class defender. Mm. This is a three-at-the-back three at the back system, obviously. Three at, so yeah. I, I think they still have another centre-back signing. In they them, might, though. however, um, for Uruguay, his name escapes me, bro. He plays for... Napoli, he's Uruguayan, he plays on the left, left back, um, he played as a centre-back. Oliveira. Oliveira, Oliveira, yes, Oliveira. thank you. Has been deployed as a centre-back in a four-at-the-back really? system for, for Uruguay. And you need to be very good to play as a centre-back in a four-at-the-back. Interesting, interesting. So I think pretty much when it comes to starting back three, they might be set. And I also see Conte starting Di Lorenzo potentially as one of those centre-backs as well because... I think it, it'll be more... There's, there's uh, well. Rahmani, Rahmani as well. Discount, Absolutely. Gets a job Ostegaard done. Ostegaard can do a good job as well. But then Ostegaard and Rahmani, then you're like, ah, <laughs> you know what both of them, you know what I mean? Like Rahmani looks good with someone good next to him. Like when yeah. you had Koulibaly, when you had <laughs> Manolas, you know what, you know what Ostegaard near him. That's but such bon a good point, bon bon Finally, someone has solid replacement for Kim. Yes. Huge, huge signing for them. Absolutely, man. And it seems like they're focusing primarily on strengthening that back line. And that is what wins you the league. No defenses, solid defenses win you the league, especially in Serie A. Mm-hmm. Um, another interesting signing is Nicolo Cambiaghi, who was still owned by Atalanta. He was out on loan at Empoli last season. Had a decent season. I mean, Empoli, it's a bit hard to judge how a player is by playing at at Empoli, he's especially. A talent, though, he's a talent. He's definitely he talent. dangerous and he's always involved in the attacks. Bologna have acquired his his talents for 10 million. What a great move for him, huh? I think so. Battling relegation with Empoli. Now, keep, em, Empoli had two guys um, that had the capability of leaving where they were, a relegation battling team, and taking a massive step up. Um, his name... Is, can, no. Um, he went to Roma. Baldanzi. Baldanzi was one of them. Where one second he's playing for Empoli. Next second, he's playing for De Rossi's Roma, fighting for a Champions League and playing in the Europa League. I don't think he played in the Europa League, however. Mm. Um, and now Cambiaghi to Bologna, straight into the Champions League. Yes. L- like, what a culture shock for these players. Um, they're moving smart, Bologna. Um, mm. They've brought in Cambiaghi for 10 million. They've brought in Emil Holm, mm. who's a very oh, great formidable signing. Um, great. fullback as well. He can he, bomb he, forward. He looks a bit like Pavlovich. He has that... St- Yes, See, yes, killer he's look, got I that guess. Serial <laughs> killer look. Um, they're also trying to bring in none other than Mats Hummels, who apparently has turned down many an offer because he wants to join Bologna because he wants to play in the Champions League. He was I never thought I'd Milan, say that in bro. my life. He yeah. was interested in Milan initially, but Milan are like, 
agency there was some weird agency commission because Classic. you could get them on a free um but the wages were high and the agency commission was high i checked I'd it out fucking take hummels for a season bro absolutely hummels yes. in the champions league looked like the best center back in the world i'm not even exaggerating by any he, stretch he looked, of the imagination he looked really good it's like true. dortmund defensively looked great and he was by far their best defender it's true it's true he looked great um grape grape I think they're moving very smart in Bologna. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Italiano as well as a signing. Mm-hmm. Italiano mm-hmm. famously making two conference league finals and in a row and both. losing both. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm going to just blast through a few signings. Okay. So we can move on perhaps to our question segment. If there is anything you'd like to comment or say about these signings, please stop me. I'll give you the little bit I know about these guys. I like... Sorry for, for Please. jumping in, but I like Oristano to Venezia. That's absolutely brilliant it's, it's as well. Four million. Move. It's a good move for Oristano. I feel like he, he played a good part at Cagliari because they had a lot of similar profile strikers that aren't very mobile. And then they'd bring in Oristano who's got legs on him so he could turn like a possession-based game into attack by himself yeah. without involving Luvumbo and all these other guys. He contributed greatly to their survival. He's still, on, he's still only 21 years old and he has that Serie A relegation fighting uh-huh. experience in him. It was impressive him. against Atalanta when we watched him live as well, Oristano. He had started. It's true. And the last time we saw Venezia in Serie A, their biggest problem was they didn't have guys who had done it before. Yep. They had yep. no Serie A experience whatsoever. Mm. So as we mentioned, there was also Pepe Reina, who's joining Como, very interesting. Um, Paulo Lopez is also joining Como. So we, we assume that Paulo Lopez will be starting, right? 29 years old. Reina's the backup. He's been a backup. Ah, I, to be honest, I don't fancy either of them to start. Yeah. As in Reina, he was a good keeper. At Liverpool, he was a good keeper, <laughs> which is like 15 <laughs> fucking years between ago. Between 2005 and 2014. That's crazy, man. Insane. Um, We're so old. Paulo Lopez. Correct me if I'm wrong. Sometimes I don't know how people bloody. He had a good man. season at Marseille. I don't know. I don't know if he had a good. I, I, as in, I, I genuinely, I don't know. But why watch him at Roma? He was ass. He was. It's true. He didn't have a good ass at Roma. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, but apparently he stepped up at Marseille. And he's he respected came after by the fans. Chesney, he came yeah. after Chesney and Alison. Alison. Yep. So they went. They Great went. Company. Chesney, Alison, Paul Lopez. Nice. Yeah. Um, Parma have signed Zion Suzuki. He's a 21-year-old goalkeeper renowned for his agility and shot-stopping prowess, of course, and his composure under pressure. He's a a pretty um, highly rated goalkeeper in Japan. He was bought from a team called Sint Truiden. Um, he's also Blasian, and I believe he's the first in the league. Um, so very interesting to see that. Why are you laughing, man? Uh, what's so it's funny? He's Blasian. Uh, it just, it just uh, took me by surprise. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> but carry on. So, apologies for it. Sorry about guys. our guest, Go guys. On, man. Um, <laughs> Saul Coco. Saul Coco, please. Coco, yes. We now have Coco in the league, and we also have Duda in the league, which yes. is excellent. Yes, he's 24 years old, and he's joined Lazio from Las Palmas for... A fee of, I believe it was something like 10 million euros. I'm not too sure, to be honest with you. I'll mm. have to double check that. But he's a, a, a reliable defender. Big guy. Um, and I think he'll, he'll slots right into that starting 11 for them. Big boy! Sorry. There we go. Um, we also have Spinazzola. We spoke about Mediterranean. Did we Port- speak about Spinazzola? We didn't speak about Spinazzola. We haven't. No, Spinazzola so to Napoli yes. is huge for a contest system. It is, but As if in, he stays healthy, if you he know stays how it healthy. is. Big question over his fitness, but it's a no-brainer on a free. Mm-hmm. It's good business. No, you I take think. him. Yeah. When you play with left wing-backs and right wing-backs, you take him, right? Because you never know. He might give you might be one, a backup. Yeah, uh-huh. one good the, season. Like, you know, oh, my like, God. Good Mario season. Rui might have another breakthrough season over there. I'm playing oh. left wing back finally, bro. He's been playing left four back Conte. in a 4-4. Four, four, so four, finally, three, three. his left foot will be utilized. Mario Rui is probably the most average left back I've ever seen in my life. But then he's got the left foot, bro, to whip in crosses, it's crazy how set much, pieces. How, how much... A left wing back can bring out of a player rather than being a being a yeah, left back. And, and, yeah, and vice versa. So. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, so interesting to see what Spinazzola can do. Um, Meditaremi was brought in um, by Inter from you Porto know he's on a free, against Milan. On a free you know. transfer. This was one of the ones where Milan refused to pay, this, paid to pay him the salary um, that he requested. Milan have become experts of 
rejecting salary increase requests and um, commission fees and things like this. I guess it, we can it's call it good. moving strategically. Uh-huh. It was quite highly rated. In, in Taremi was. However, he had a bit of a dip, a dip towards the end. Yes, um, because he is a very dangerous player to the point that if the ball is loose in the box and he, he finds it, he's smacking it into mm-hmm. the back of the net. He's a poacher uh, with a lot of goal prowess about it. I think considering Inter already have... The strikers that they do up front, it's it's a it's a brilliant signing for yeah. them. Because last season, if God forbid anything happened to Thuram or to um, Lautaro, they had Arnautovic. They, they were stuck with Arnautovic and Sanchez. And Sanchez <laughs> yeah. who, I mean, they both passed it in that sense. Absolutely. But now Mediterranean. My God, in, in, yeah, in, good, Inter are so team. intelligent. In they the are, market. and also... and it's also just like a fuck you to Milan, right? Because we managed to land him. It creates even more storylines, man. They've got. Thuram as well. Mm-hmm. Um, now they've also brought in Piotr Zielinski, by the way, who's a very versatile midfielder who who loves a one-two. You know, he can occupy the Mkhitaryan position, finally relieving him of his mm-hmm. duties, allowing him some slumber. Finally, ah. poor Mkhitaryan, he's been at it. <laughs> I, think, I think it's a very smart move and Inter, once again, are, are proving to be the bargain hunters of the league, man. And the fact that they, they've won the league and they made it to the Champions League final the year before... They're they're they've got a lot of pull, and I think the they're because uh-huh. financially they're not strong. They're one of the weaker ones mm-hmm. in the top. Part you know what team. happened with with um, their former owners um, of Zhang. Zhang, yes. They, they it, it 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 they completely lost them. There was like the a, like group. a take over the Sooning Group uh, because they didn't pay back a loan that they got from their hedge fund in time, <laughs> and now that hedge fund took over the club. The same thing um, that happen, had happened to Milan with Elliot. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. But now the the who, the guy who was their sporting director, I believe Marotta, um, who is the guy that that puts all these fantastic deals together for them into our team that have been bankrupt mm-hmm. for the past six seven years, like, man, and, and and he just keeps making them stronger and stronger from season to season. This guy now has all the liberty to to shape the team the way he wants to. So Inter are only going to get stronger, man. Absolutely. Sucks. Yes. Um, Roma have a new metronome. They've bought for 2 million euros. Um, Enzo Lefe, he's a, a very highly rated midfielder, kind mm. of like a, a deep-lying playmaker. Um, he'll dictate play. He was with Laurent, for 135 games scoring seven goals in that period he's mm-hmm. good the goals are just uh, as well. yeah exactly that that's more what he does um and then he had one season at ren where he impressed everyone you know mm-hmm. and that's that was his breakout season and and roma um hopped in for him very intelligent deal because it's low cost and he looks like a very reliable good player mm-hmm. i think yeah so was we're... it two million the deal apparently it was two million yeah Sure. But anyway, please. Yeah. <laughs> so Cagliari have been moving mad as well. They've brought in Mattia Felici, who is a 22-year-old forward slash winger, who is known to have flair and an eye for goal as well. They brought him from Feral Pesaro in Serie B, mm. where he played 36 games and scored four goals. He's just a little bit of depth for Cagliari, who have also sold Sulemana to... Atalanta, and in return, uh-huh. brought in, yes, for 8 million. So wow. Sulemana has joined Atalanta for 8 million. He's going to become a monster over there. Zortea has gone to Cagliari for 5 million. That's a steal, if I've ever seen one. Mm-hmm. Five, 5 million for Zortea. Great, Great signing. signing. Great signing. And Piccoli's joined them on loan for 2 million with a 10 million euro option to buy. Piccoli's gone to Cagliari. Another great, yes. great signing. As in Piccoli... He's, he's he's quite on and off, no? He is, but for these teams, he's perfect. Uh-huh, you know? uh-huh. Just a correction, bro. Adopo as well. Yes? Lefer was signed for 23 million. 20, ah, you know what happened? The three on my laptop is <laughs> fucked. I was <laughs> <laughs> saying two million. That's hilarious, <laughs> oh, bro. That's God. fucking brilliant. Yes, yes. In fact, it doesn't always work. I apologize. <laughs> Cagliari, million. Yes, Cagliari that makes have sense. moved well and it seems like the players that, that they're signing would work well with Davide Nicola mm-hmm. who's a very he can bring the best out of players no absolutely Piccoli has struggled but but imagine him under Nicola for Cagliari yeah. I see that working a little bit more when we brought on Joseph Menal on the show he told us afterwards that Davide Nicola is a coach that makes you want to die for him he makes you want it's to go out there and just play for him like he, Davide Nicola had a kid which he tragically lost 
he'd bring him into it like he'd, he'd bring him to, up it's, it's, it's like my, you, yeah. my like my son is dead health like you have to score kind of thing and they go out and they score yeah um adopo has also joined um Cagliari from um atalanta <laughs> he had previously been owned by torino now a few interesting things um verona's cabal you remember this center back mm-hmm. cabal? cabal he was pretty good eh? mm-hmm. inter have been all over him and apparently you were hijacking for 10 million euros okay wow yes so that good as in that inter and you were fucking fighting hey. over him yeah hey. it's um, like he's um what's his name i don't know bremer bremer yeah. Sebastian Esposito, one of the many Espositos, has joined Empoli. Um, Iker Bravo from Real Madrid has joined Udinese. Interesting to see um, how that will develop. And Castrovilli has joined Lazio on a free. Lazio are making some interesting signings. Huh? Right? I'm they're they're, they're making very happen. mid signings, man. Like, like as I get, I get that. Shauna um, is young, and who's another young guy that they signed as well? Uh, um, Noslin. Noslin is young. So I get that they are like sustainable signings, but it's also like buy a, buy a good player who's good right now. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> Castrovilli <laughs> hasn't. Is happening. Uh, ex- yeah. Exactly. Castrovilli hasn't been good in five, six years. He's plagued with injuries. I don't know again. what to expect from Lazio, man. I have no idea what to expect from Eighth. them. Eighth. I think I think they're the team in the in the top half of the season that we know the least about. It's true. It's you true. know because everything, all, all the factors yeah. are new. Everything you remember about when we made our relegation starting eleven? It's Lazio, bro. It's they're, a, they're, they're, it's they're just true. signing everyone from there. They're putting they, together they our to relegation episode. starting yeah. eleven. So Harui has gone to Hellas Verona from Frosinone. I think that's Good a decent signing. signing yes. Signing. Um, also, Hellas Verona have also brought in a guy called Martin Freze, who is a centre back, and I guess he'll be replacing Cabal. I mean, they brought him in from God knows how to pronounce this, Nordsjulland. Ah, uh, Ma- Matthias will know how to say that. It's true. He'll definitely correct Matthias me. Matthias and that. Alan. Yes, please. Um, I think it's time to. Pay homage, brother, to Ciro Mobile, who has left Lazio. There have been devastating clips of Lazio fans hugging him and crying mm-hmm. because he has become an icon at that club. He's a legend. It's not every day you get to actually watch a legend, a, a team's all-time top scorer playing mm-hmm. for them. You know, you can you always get to enjoy that. And people often underrate Ciro Mobile, man. He's off to Besiktas now. Um, because of his obviously the way he's performed with the Italian national team and the fact that he was quite on and off before actually settling at Lazio he's got a bit of a an inconsistent reputation let's but, call it that but but th- th- this is what I don't understand the, you're, you're talking about a guy who is the eighth all-time leading goal scorer in Serie A history how you could even utter as a Serie A fan how you could even utter a negative word about this guy is beyond me you could see what he's done um for Italy he's always struggled and that is like one of the the most inexplicable things I can think of because for a guy that is banging them in left right and center in the league outscoring the likes of Cristiano Ronaldo in three the time capo cannoniere three time capo cannoniere um Yet people still seem unconvinced by his abilities. I, I find it baffling. Let's let's look at the names that have more goals than him. There are seven players. Hit me. Number seven, Roberto Baggio. <laughs> Number six, Antonio Di Natale. Number four, tied, Jose Altafini and Giuseppe Meazza. Number three, Gunnar Nordal. Number two, Francesco Totti. Number one, Silvio Piola. Yeah, and number four of eight. those guys played when people smoked, so Chiro's technically <laughs> better. Right? Exactly. <laughs> he has more goals than Del Piero, more goals than Battistuta, more goals than Quagliarella, Gilardino. Yeah, no, he's a he's a he's a legend in Italian football. Is it one hundred and sixty-nine? He's got for Lazio and two hundred and seventy appearances. Great. Sometimes you great need the, the dust to settle for people to really appreciate yeah. your yeah, exactly. legacy. Absolutely. Exactly. Like when Michael Jackson died. <laughs> <That's a perfect laughs> the dust settled and exactly everyone started calling yeah. him a yeah. pedophile. Like, wow, he was really good. <laughs> he was. Yeah. <laughs> he was a fantastic right he back. Was. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Which Chiro Mobile goal will forever stick with you? For me, it's his goal against Napoli when he 
I don't even know the way he, he like chopped and turned and spun Koulibaly oh. and and just curled it in, man. It was oh. I, I remember he received it, he was perfectly parallel between the two center backs mm. and he made them kiss almost. It was <laughs> it was incredible. There had been no goal that stands out to me. It, it's 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 just it wasn't one of those dudes to score bangers. But he he'd, he'd finish off a move and he'd yeah. be in the right place at the right time. That that's what'll stick out to me. His relationship with SMS is going to be significantly missed. These are the two guys that, that, that mm-hmm. they linked up. Like you're talking about to the scale of Kaka and Shevchenko. Yeah, you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. That's what they were for a lot. It's you know? true. I was, like that, that's going to be missed. One is Saudi and one's in Turkey. Baby, now. if you give it to me, I'll give it to you. That was their philosophy. What yeah. am I doing? Right? I, got, <laughs> I, I hope he does well in Turkey. That would be cool. Mm. Um, another interesting thing I've I've noticed is that Massimo Coda, mm. who's a prolific Serie B goal scorer, who bangs in, by the way, tell this guy bangs in 20 goals a season in Serie B, his team gets promoted and he and just joins Serie another Serie B yeah. team. He's just constantly doing that. You always in have Europe. these occasional weirdos. I, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> what do you think it is? They just love a drink. They love a steak. What is it like? <laughs> it's like it's like I'd rather dominate this pond than move to the bigger one. It's true, be like mm. any other fish. But respect, you know, this guy has joined Sampdoria from Genoa on loan because he's still owned by by Genoa. And I don't think there are many players who have made that that switch. Especially no, Genoa to Sampdoria, one of the most fierce rivalries in La Lanterna. In, in La Lanterna derby. Yeah. Oh my god. Um, Thor is a one, recent man. one who's done it. Um, who's been to both is in mm. but I think when it comes to a loan I can't recall another one but, hey, but yeah very interesting hey, it's a crazy this would have one. never happened if they were in the same division of course mm-hmm. Pereira from Udinese has left finally left Udinese he tried to leave last season but no one wanted him so he ended up renewing uh, <laughs> that, no let me just tell you that Please. I went to watch Milan last year yeah. against Udinese in the pouring rain yeah, and I I, I I watched a 1-0 loss to Udinese Scored by Roberto Pereira. Scored a penalty. <laughs> wow. Did you, did you... Who stood out to you that day? <laughs> who stood out to me? Yeah. It was bafflingly bad. It was... It, it was, was a really, really bad game. game. Horrendous It watch. was in the same period where Napoli had that comeback against us. The 2-2. Yeah. Two, because two, that, that's... I was in Oz. We had, we had a dark period. Of course you were. You had to record that there shit alone. Of, it was horrible. lack of chances. At, yeah. Uh, and that very frustrating and frustrated layout. Yeah, mm. flailing his arm. That's right, yeah. yeah. Um, another interesting one is Milenkovic is joining Nottingham Forest. Um, mm. Milenkovic, bro, is younger than I thought he was. How old do you think? 26, 27. Wow, you fucking nailed it. I'm Milenkovic, age is 26 years old, exactly. He's joining Forest. He is a massive, massive, massive defender whose recovery speed is not fantastic. And that's why he fell out of favor. But when it mm. comes to just being the last man... And going into these 50-50s, he's a very good player. And he's great in the air. He's well. great he's in the air, gets you an odd goal here and there, the odd header. Come on, Forest. Yeah, so interesting to see what he'll do at Forest. Mm-hmm. But yeah, that pretty much sums up the entire um, sheet that we prepared for this one, bro. Uh-huh. Shall we jump to the questions? questions? I know we have some. I know we have some questions. We could do those and wrap up. Yeah. Um, Favorite pizza. Oof. So I wanted to ask you, by the way, Theo, because um, I don't, I don't know if I've ever asked you this how question. Rude. How rude! And, okay. uh, come on, pizza it has to be Hawaiian. Um, I agree. Seriously, good, good, I actually agree. No, I'm, I'm not being serious. Uh, me, me, me neither. <laughs> <laughs> um, hmm. How old were you, and how did it feel, and were you watching? Sixteen. Yeah. When. <laughs> When Michael Mifsud put two past Manchester United. Context, oh, Michael Mifsud is um, a Maltese footballer, a retired footballer nowadays, who um, used to play for Coventry City at the peak of his career and came up against Manchester United in the FA Cup. And United were playing a pretty good team back then. You know, they were playing good defenders. Mm-hmm. And I, and Michael Mifsud scored twice and hit the post. It's it's the best a Maltese player has ever done on the international. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's the greatest yeah. Maltese achievement since the, the great siege. It's but, true. Yeah. Roberta Ro- 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 Metzola just won her second term huh? in the European Parliament. Is that too past United? No. but, but Yeah, like it's not quite too past United. Is Michael Mifsud skinned. Gerard Piquet. Yeah, uh, absolutely. Uh, in uh, front of your very it was, a, it was a very surreal experience because I was about nine years old, I think, back then. Mm. Um, honestly, honest emotions. 
I was angry. I was I I really didn't want to get knocked out of that cup at that point. In my life. <laughs> it was I, the Carabao cup. Yeah, so you didn't ca- even enjoy it. No, I I felt very conflicted, but I I I was more like like what the fuck is this guy doing? <laughs> <laughs> Like how how are you losing to this champ? Um, <laughs> we in hindsight, in hindsight, I, I think as I grew older, I started to see the achievement as more incredible than uh, I felt in that moment. We oh, were we were asleep. Hilarious. It was a school <laughs> night. Very bad because we wanted to watch a game with my friends. I thought go go to bed. Like don't worry, let you know if something if something happens. We were asleep. I was just here. Go! <laughs> It's my dad losing his mind. And that happened twice, man. <laughs> No, he hit the post with that Takuna. It was amazing. Uh-huh. It was amazing. Okay, so that was my question for you. Now, we have a question from Alessio de Malman on Instagram, who asks, what do you think of Milan's slow transfer window? Will we speed up? Will we sign Fofana, Fulkrug and Pavlovic? So I don't know if we will sign them, but um, Pavlovich is looking to be the most likely mm-hmm. out of those guys, just to answer this question. Milan's Mercato was slow, but naturally I think they had to wait for the Euros to be over uh-huh, to really start uh-huh. making moves. I think that's a very underrated part of why a lot of teams have a, have had a slow yeah. transfer mm-hmm. window. It's hard to negotiate for any player in the Euros because you just yeah. get the weight to laugh. Exactly. exactly. You're stalling because if he scores, his value doubles. I don't think, I don't think Milan will sign for fun, unfortunately, man. It, it just seems like whenever Milan's acquisition process takes a month mm-hmm. then it's the player isn't yeah. going to sign whenever it whenever it takes long like you see how they signed when they signed Rinders when they signed Okafor these were boom 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 just bring them in one week negotiating in when it seems to to take around one month it seems like because there's there's a hesitancy and that's where another team comes in because obviously Milan's scouting system is good if Milan are interested in a player Lazio will come in like they did with Kamada for example and, and just nick him absolutely know? yes and um The previous management moved in silence when this management doesn't seem to be mm. doing that. They're more public with mm. their negotiations. I trust them. I don't I don't mind that that it's been quiet thus far. I think Morata is, is the first one and they've made it clear like look more signings are coming. Mm. They and and I think a massive couple of signings this season for Milan is The fact that Zlatan came out and said, "Look, Milan don't need to sell shit to." Buy That's these massive. Players. Milan are the only team that have that. We're currently Milan are currently negotiating with Theo yeah. to um, extend his contract until 2029. Fantastic. That'd be that'd be. I don't bring anyone. I say I don't give a fuck if we extend Theo until 2029. It is. Yeah. Huge, bro. And huge. It, it's massive. Of course, it will be massive. Another thing I liked is that Fonseca has had training sessions before we've dabbled in, into the market. Yeah. Yeah. So, for example, before when we were being rumored to Emerson Royale, for example. God. Now, Fonseca has gone and he's like, listen, I can make do with what we uh-huh. have here. We don't need to spend 20 million on this guy. Like, Literally. We have this Kalulu guy who looks good, like, uh-huh. you know. And... Uh-huh, I don't know. I, I I like the environment. I like what I've seen. I like the way Fonseca has spoken about Milan, about the project, about the team. Uh-huh. Um, I like how passionate he seems when talking about his ideas and mm-hmm. his developments. Like kisses, it. Fonseca. Kisses. So, yes, kisses for Fonseca. Alan. Alan says, Morata given a four-year contract. That's a big mistake. I cannot imagine him good at ages <laughs> 34, 35 plus. He has a quality season. No, he has quality and will probably give us good moments this season, but four years, that is the questionable part he'll of the deal. He'll be 36 by the end of what, it, right? That's probably what attracted him. Yes, he'll be 36 by the end of it. Four. If we looked at how Giroud pressed at 39. Uh-huh. <laughs> it's it's like, like it's, it is weird. As you say, 32-year-old mm. on a, on a four-year contract. It is strange. But I always see the length of the contract. The, the, the longer the contract is, the higher the value of a player when it comes to putting them up on the market. So if Milan can make, so so if he's got one year left on his contract, Milan are going to make two three million for him. But but if if he's got three years left on his contract, you know Milan can make close to 10 million for him. So I never see the length of a contract as an issue, um, unless it's come to a point where Milan want him out and he's just happy collecting his wage. And, well, and that's and what's gonna on. inevitably happen. Eh? I mean, mm-hmm. he'll run down his contract for sure. Yeah. However, it's it's the it's what you it's the trade off. You're mm-hmm. paying 13 million. That's the trade off. That's it. It's, That's it's it. what um, uh, it's doesn't what ruin the me. event. <laughs> uh, it, doesn't, it doesn't bother me too much, though. It doesn't bother me too yeah. much. Yeah, it's, it's it's weird because of the wage bill and how careful and how cautious Milan have been 
with structuring this wage bill. It's been very mm. meticulously crafted, Milan's wage mm. bill, and it's low and it's in the perfect priority of importance. Mm-hmm. In three years' time, that might be disrupted because of this. But then, by then, hopefully, the salaries of the key players will have mm. increased well, beyond hopefully that. Hopefully, by then, it'd by be then, it'll be a normal player. salary, maybe. Uh-huh. Who knows? The, by the by then, is, there, there, is a, there is a definite scenario where he has a poor start this year. He has a poor season. Mm. He's mentally, he's not. He's not, he's not the strongest. The no. strongest. Uh-huh. If mm. he has a bad start, he could end up that player that you're on yeah. this podcast halfway to the season saying, get him out. <laughs> and then he has another three years on his contract and he's 32, turning 33. Mm-hmm. So it is a risk. I do find it weird as well. I think mm. he'd, he'd have probably considered less. Uh huh. Maybe not. Maybe that's what it took he's, to bring him in. He 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 seemed to be chatting shit about about Atletico Madrid uh, uh, right now, like when he's mm. on his way out. Maybe, so, maybe. Know. Yeah, it's 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 definitely a lot. Um, also, I haven't seen if it's gross or net. A massive difference. Uh-huh, I haven't true. seen that, true. so so I can't really comment. Um, we're a bit pressed for time. So okay, so you, let's so go to the next one. Left. We have Adam on Instagram. He asks, "Does Napoli have the squad to effectively play contest system, or do you expect a shift on his end?" Um, I don't expect a shift ever when it comes to that. <laughs> well, you think he's going to play a 4 3 3? No <laughs> yeah, way. Like, yeah. No way. But um, Napoli having the squad, that's a very interesting question because technically, like, Guevara is out of possession. Uh-huh. Di Lorenzo is out of possession. Mm-hmm. Position. I don't know what I'm saying, possession. Um, there are a few players who don't fit in exactly. However, I'm they have sure a lot Conte, of signings to make. Conte will make it work. Vara, Vara fits the second striker, striker. position perfectly for mm-hmm. Conte. Uh-huh. It, I, I'd love to see who he's going to pair with. It. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Yeah, a, a bit more of a Maybe target Lukaku, plan, huh? I would reckon. Oh, I, I see Lukaku and Guevara. Mm. Lukaku and Guevara, where he needs to work on is the two central midfielders, or the three central midfielders, rather, because he's losing Zielinski. Um, we know there was that bet, this guy, or whatever he want, they, that Napoli wanted last season. He'd be a good fit over there. At the moment, we're looking at Anguissa, Lobotka. Which and... isn't bad. It's a good, it's a great two to work with. You have uh-huh. two you good just starters. You of the profile you of just need another starter. No exactly. Mm-hmm. And... Are we sure Ozeman is, is, is off? He's well? off to PSG. Confirmed? Yes. No, not, not, not confirmed. But Romano said he's keen on joining. PSG want mm-hmm. him. PSG want a right. player, bro. He's not yeah, exactly he's creating good ads for himself, is he Ozeman? No. Going on these Instagram lives. You saw that. And on Instagram been, live yeah, calling it. out the Nigeria manager. Uh, he's very going, vocal going him, like, I'll, I'll fucking, I'll, I'll say I'm it right yet. now, I'll say it. And then his friend telling him, calm down, Victor, you're, you're, doing, you're going too far. <laughs> and then Victor's looking at his friend going, I'll knock your head, I'll knock your head, like losing his mind, I swear to God, yeah. So uh, maybe it's putting people off. <laughs> Davis on Instagram asks... What do you think about Zerg Ziteo? We've already discussed that. But he asks, how many goals will he score in his first season? Nine. Nine goals? Oof. And nine Premier League goals. Nine Which, Premier and will he be goals. happy with that? I think if he can come in and, and uh, link up, play well, press well from the front, create chances, mm. I would be happy with that. Mm. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and say nine goals, nine assists. There we go. There we go. Not quite double figures, but close enough. 18 goal contributions. Yes, I'll take it. Piero Inter Kanguro on Instagram asked how Zergzi will be used in Ten Hag system. We've discussed it, but mm-hmm. shout out to Piero. Thank mm-hmm. you very much for the question. Anthony Locascio, a comedian, Australian, was on our podcast. Fantastic. Hilarious guy. <coughs> He's asking you specifically, Theo. Mm-hmm. Matteo Ebeya of... Where does he live? Um, right now, Swatar. Matteo Ebeya of Swatar. What do you think about Jaden Sancho? Because he's obviously been linked to Juventus. Mm-hmm. Jaden Sancho. Um, what he did at Dortmund was like extraordinary. Like if you look at his numbers at Dortmund, it was actually. I don't think I've been as excited for for a signing as much as I was for Sancho because I thought this guy is gonna come in and and solve our right wing problem. Mm-hmm. Now. First weird thing is that apparently he doesn't even want to play right wing, so I'm, I'm, I'm not sure. I'm not sure what broke down there, but apparently he doesn't love it. Um, Where does he want to play? Left. Ah, okay. Um, Goalkeeper. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, so that that's one thing that's never quite worked for him, and that he hasn't played in the position he wanted to. Although when I went when he went to Dortmund this season, I believe he ended up settling for the right there anyway. Um, 
stylistically, I don't think he fits Ten Hag's system. He, I mean, you, you know what happened uh, from an attitude point of view. There have been murmurs of things he's done at, at Dortmund. He could have come out and just apologized for um, what he said against Ten Hag and Ten Hag would have forgiven it. He chose not to. That says a certain thing about him as well. Um, from a, let's, let's go back to the stylistic element. Sancho is very much a, a player who who enjoys kind of ball at his feet. He can he he'll take a player on. He'll play these quick one twos. This isn't really who United are under mm. Ten Hag. Ten Hag likes the, his wingers to make making runs in behind. Mm. Um, so in that sense, I'm not sure on if Sancho will have a a, a kind of redemption arc back at at United. At Juve. If he had to go play under Mata, given given how Mata in general, you know, gets his attacking players involved in the game, I can probably see him doing well there. Mm-hmm. Uh, what uh, typical Juve would it would definitely be some kind of loan with some yeah, yeah. nice optional to buy yeah. uh, uh, you know, based on appearances. Based on appearances, they'd probably try and 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 tell us. That the, so we pay half his, his salary as well uh-huh, exactly. so very much depends on the terms and you'd probably but, do it <laughs> but, but with these players it's a, it's a it's either going to go one way or another eh? yes and uh, given you will get him on loan I think it would be a good a good move for them uh-huh. makes sense our last question comes from Benji Flynn and he asks would Genoa win the Premier League by January or February uh, December December, Oof. nice. You heard it here first. Guys. Winter champions and champions of the season. Champions they take with 40 goals. Thank you very much, a Teo, pleasure. for coming on. We'll do this again. Ah, Teo, Teo, this is his second gig on the podcast. We had him on for the, for the World Cup semi-final chat when we were drunk off our asses watching France-England. That was... A pleasure. That was fun. That was a pleasure. pleasure. This was a different kind and I enjoyed it. Entirely. Very good. We'll do it again. Hopefully, Serie A will bring in some more um, Premier League players. Uh, I'll just add that to thought. you this year. Exactly. Yes, thank you. Um, if anyone wants to start a podcast with Theo about uh, the Premier League, please do. He has a lot of friends that are, you know, smart enough to do it, but none of them have the balls that Theo has. So, if one of you knows a lot about the Premier League and has a huge set of nuts... Uh, please hit Teo up and start a podcast. Maybe we'll and start while we're Premier while, Spotlight. while we're advertising mm. me, I am on the dating apps. Yes, there B- we go. Bumble, yeah. Tinder, all of them. Find For a four percent of female listeners, contact me on LinkedIn. There we go. <laughs> before Thank before we go, shout out to Alan, Andrew, Andy, Anthony, Tim, Campbell, Sluge, McNoodle, Elena, David, Kyle, Luca, Matthias, Mint, Michael, Tonna, Ed, and finally. Thank you very much. These are our patrons. These are the guys who keep the show going. These are the guys who have funded the studio. Thank you very much and goodbye. We love you all. This is Seria Spotlight. If you like Serie A or have ever liked it in the past, it's a good opportunity for you to listen once a week and you'll get filled in. In the football weekend, that's like the main dish. But then a few days later, you drop your episode and that's like the dessert. And the dessert is just perfect. It's good, the cake. It makes it feel like we're all sitting in a room together, just BSing with each other. The atmosphere is fantastic. I promise nobody will ask you to send boob pics. Sometimes it may be good, sometimes it may be shit. I love how you go into so much detail and show so much passion towards each and every team. Literally, no team is left undiscussed. When I listen to you, it's like I'm talking to you in a pub. It's like I'm chatting to a friend and you're chatting to me.